welcome to Miami. UFC 299, one of the most stacked cards we have seen in recent memory. Not one, not two, but 16 ranked fighters set to make the walk. And what better place for the Sugar Show to defend his Bantamweight title for the first time than right here in the 305. How about a live look at the weigh-in stage where 28 fighters are set to step to the scale in the next hour. It's a condensed weigh-in window. This time it's going to be fast and furious. We're going to tell you all about it as we are here for it every step of the way. Welcome to the official. UFC 299 weigh-in show. As always, Laura Sanko is here, Daniel Cormier is here, but since the Bantamweight title is on the line, we had to get the guy who could be fighting for that strap this year, Corey Sandhagen, here as well. All right. Air high five. We high five me and Corey. We're friends. <laughs> I'm glad you're welcoming to the show. Yeah, you're being nice for a change. I love Corey Sanhagen. Oh, it's hard you. not to love Corey Sanhagen. Thank you. I think you guys might I was a little worried about it. I was yeah. a little worried about it. Oh, the only first. person he's mean to is me. So you're good. Oh, OK, <laughs> great. Um, hey, we talked a little you bit gotta, about. You got to, like, get him comfortable first. Then I <laughs> stab him in the back, Laura. You know how it works. We talked a little bit about the, uh, the new structure for the weigh-ins. Now, here in Miami, the commission has decided to try to have a one-hour window instead of a two-hour window to weigh in, right? So the deal is, if you don't weigh in in that one-hour window, you can weigh in in the second hour, but you only get one shot. Mm -hmm. If you miss on your first weigh-in from 9 to 10, you do get an hour to try to make the weight. So it's a little different. It's a little different, and it's because... So yesterday we talked about this, and I spoke of the mistake that the Florida Commission was making, but then as I've done my research, guys, I spent a lot of time... <laughs> working on this. Here is what happened. Before it was supposed to be 9 to 11, main event fighters would get an extra hour, but then prelim fighters started, they started to game the system. So what the Florida Commission is trying to do is get it to a tight two-hour window. So 9 to 10, you make your first attempt. If you miss on that first attempt, you get an extra hour, but you will never see anyone weigh in now past 11 o'clock. Hats off to the Florida Commission for trying to get this thing right because I got to tell you, I was really disappointed with the fighters in trying to game a system that was put in place you to try to give them more time impressed. to recover after making weight. I you was very impressed. disappointed. No, you were impressed. Corey. Just let me tell you one thing. I put There's, a lot of research. I did a lot of research, and how good did I explain that, guys? Put it in so the comments. That wasn't bad. When but the reality that. is, you want this to be over as early as possible so you can play golf today. Me, no. Well, that is a byproduct of the Florida <laughs> Commission being a great commission. I don't know. It seems a little bit silly to me to make a rule like that. Why, Corey? Because I feel like now everyone's going to be scrunched into a window of having to be there from 9 to 10. And if they needed that extra hour and they have to rush, then they got to come here, they got to weigh in, and then maybe miss, and then try to come back in an hour. That could really mess but the way, stuff up. But the weigh-ins are at the hotel, which which is where they're going to be cutting uh, the weight. Okay, right? It's not okay, here okay, in okay, the arena. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I like I like that we're reining it back in, but I I, I don't like that you're taking credit for all hours of research I that did. you did. People always try to act like I don't research. Last night I spent so he much time. No, no, no. Let me address my camera. Oh, my God. He lit we literally got a primer on this 30 <laughs> seconds before going on air. Our producer spelled it out, and DC's like, uh-huh. Well, did oh, I, I had did, no wait, idea. Did I, had I no idea. Did, I, did, I, did I just say everything word for word what he said? You're a very good parrot. <laughs> you get paid a lot of money to be a parrot. You've been hanging out with Chael too You're much, so DC. disrespectful, Laura. But it's okay, though. We got two hours. <laughs> it's, it's been a long time since we've been on a show I together, so I'm feeling, I'm feeling spicy And it today. seems as though you have lost track of what the rules are. You're, <laughs> you know, dude, they were very specific in terms of what we could wear, but I guess Laura makes her own rules. No what? ripped jeans. No ripped jeans. No ripped jeans. Oh, no point. logos right then. No ripped jeans. I don't have any yeah. logos. No, you no. have a logo. One. But they said no big logos. No ripped jeans was the number one rule on the weigh-in show. And what do you wear? Stand up, Laura. I show will. the people. I will show the people. Look at that. Ripped right? jeans right away. And look. And is this not cute? It, it is a nice <laughs> outfit, but it doesn't matter. It's nice looking. We still looking. have rules that we need to follow. Look at, I See, mean, I, I'm looking straight my knees ahead are because, all because the last show, at the end of the show, I was looking at something <laughs> and somebody grabbed the meme like I was staring right at Sanko as she was were, standing. Though. So I'm going like yeah, this. You got to be time. careful, bro, because, okay, so Laura's a beautiful woman. So Thank every you. time we look at her, they think that we're like drooling over Laura. It's ridiculous. When in reality, I mean, I don't think Laura's attractive. Uh, you know what? I concur. <laughs> Corey, don't get caught. So, don't yeah, get gonna, caught. Yeah, I'm staying out of this one. So no, we are no, hearing. I don't get any 
We, we, we are hearing is uh, we are set to start the weigh-ins in about five minutes that uh, Cheeto Vera and Dustin Poirier are here. So two of our four fighters on the back end of the card are here and set to weigh in. Again, it's a condensed one-hour window. If you miss, you do get another shot as always, but they're trying to keep this a little bit tighter a, this time around. As a as a guy that's still fighting Corey, like what would you do? Would you try to – like my question is this, right? If So when you weigh in – you want to come as close to 10 as possible if you need the extra hour because it is from that time. So if you show up at 9.02, 10.02, like, okay, okay, we got to talk to John, but I, I got to know this from Corey as we get going. All right, well, we have plenty of time to talk about it. Uh, a lot of other commissions, according to Mark Ratner, also looking into making this change if it works out mm -hmm. well here. This is the way the rule was intended to be um, initially. All right, let's take a look at the main card, UFC 299. I mentioned earlier, 16 ranked fighters on the card. Every single fighter on the main card is ranked, including former champ Piotr Jan opening things up against the uber-talented Chinese bantamweight Song Yudong, former title challenger Gilbert Burns taking on the undefeated Aussie Jack Della Maddalena, 6-0 in the UFC. Longtime Bellator title challenger Michael Venom Page making his much-anticipated UFC debut. And it ain't going to be easy against top 15 welterweight Kevin Holland. And how about this? A rare five-round co-main event. It's Dustin Poirier looking to prove he's still a title challenger against Benoit Saint-Denis, who has won five straight. And our main event, Sean O'Malley, defending his bantamweight title against the only man who has solved the riddle that is the sugar show, Marlon Cheeto. Vera, and there is no riddle here. He is the voice of the UFC, and he is joining us now. John Anik, let's start with the uh, the main event in this one, shall we? Um, Sean O'Malley going into a fight as the champion for the very first time. Did you sense a, a different sugar show, or was it the same old Sean O'Malley when you talked to him? Same guy, you know, he has said to us in our fighter meetings past that he gets calmer as the fights get bigger. And that absolutely dovetails with what I am getting off of him this week. I thought he was in a great place going into the Aljamain Sterling fight when he knew he had a rib injury and probably wasn't going to be able to grapple. So I just spent a minute with his strength and conditioning coach, Brandon Harris, here at the morning weigh-in. And uh, it's all systems go. They had a healthy, thorough, fruitful training camp. And uh, we'll see what he can do against the historically durable Marlon Cheeto Vera here tomorrow night. I'm just getting a chance to see the, uh, the fit today. A little more dressed up than normal. What's going on this morning? We're going straight to our television obligations today, so uh, no one more sleep merchandise today. All right. Well, you're looking good as always, my friend. Dustin Thanks, Poirier uh, ranked third in the division, yet he's the underdog to Benoit Saint-Denis, but he seems to be embracing that underdog status a little bit this week. Is that fair to say? How about the intensity from Dustin Poirier at that press conference stare down? I thought he stole the show after what was a little bit of a pedestrian press conference, if I'm being honest. But these are the type of non-championship challenges that are going to get Dustin Poirier out of bed. And I've been saying all week there have been so many high-level lightweights that have pined for this Dustin Poirier fight, whether it's Benil Darius, our colleague, the Iron Lung, Paul Felder, and they didn't get that fight for one reason or another, but largely because DP wasn't excited about that fight. He's excited to fight this former French Special Forces operative, a guy who's dusted five straight lightweights with style points every step of the way. He knows there is major fan appetite for this fight, and uh, I think it stands to reason, even though he's a plus 170 or so underdog, that this matchup and this particular opposition is going to bring out the best in the future Hall of Famer, Dustin Poirier. And it's fascinating, too, Johnny, he said he had to kind of convince himself that this was the fight that he needed to make. This was the fight that he needed to take. And he was actually at Benoit saint -Denis last fight uh, against Matt Frivola last year. So he was uh, octagon side for that. One more question before we let you go. I know you have work to do. MVP making his uh, much-anticipated UFC debut. Obviously, you know of him. I'm assuming this uh, was the first time that you got the chance to sit down with him. Did you learn anything about Michael Venom Page in your fighter meeting? Well, I learned that he is a future in television. He is so articulate and thoughtful when he talks about mixed martial arts. And self-awareness is something that a lot of human beings in my world really lack. This man is acutely aware of self. He has one of the best highlight reels in mixed martial arts history. And it just seems as though his career has sort of methodically built to this point in time. And uh, he's got a huge test in Kevin Holland, to me, who is criminally underappreciated in terms of the overall skill set. It's a great fight, but I think everybody in that fighter meeting, to a man, to a woman, was effectively blown away by Michael Venom Page, and uh, we'll see what he can do with the showcase here in about 24 hours. John Anik, you are the man. How many more sleeps do we have? 
<laughs> One more sleep, Hellcat. Let's <laughs> fucking go. You're the best, buddy. Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right, he has to get ready because the weigh-in's starting here in just a couple of minutes. The first time we're going to get to see yeah. Michael Venom Page under the UFC banner, and it, this is not an easy fight against Kevin Holland. No, definitely not an easy fight, but, I mean, MVP, I think, is the real deal. You know, like, I've really been watching him for a decent amount of time. I think his only loss is against Lima, who's a very, very good fighter, and I think that um, he's going to – he, he kind of has a very similar style to Kevin, too. He likes to be showboaty, and he likes to, you know – like show a lot of his personality for the fans in there. And I think it's going to be really exciting, but it's a tough fight for Kevin Holland. Do, does he get the, if he wins this, whether it's impressive or let's just say a split decision, does he take the Michael Chandler route? Does he jump the line, do you think? I don't know about jumping the line. And I do think, I do think that there's some amount of pressure on him here to be Barrett MVP, if I'm being honest. All right, Hall of Famer, former UFC all right weigh-in's underway. Here's, uh, here's your guy from Lafayette. Five-round co-main event the number three ranked lightweight contender, Dustin the Diamond Poirier. Yeah, that's my boy Dustin Poirier right there. Look, he's an underdog in this fight. Dustin has been in this situation many a times. And when talking to Dustin, this kid has overcome so much over the course of his life that this is familiar to him. He is not supposed to be here where he is in life where he started. And he's drawing from all of those experiences People not expecting things from him. People telling you what you're going to be. 156. 156, telling the you official 156 weight for Dustin. For Dustin telling Poirier. you that you cannot be special. He loves to take those people and prove them wrong. And he feels like he has that opportunity this week against Benoit Saint-Denis. All right, next Think athlete be to the more. scale, the man around whom this entire fight card was built, the reigning, defending, undisputed UFC Bantamweight champion of the world, Sugar Sean O'Malley. The champion, Sean O'Malley, making his way to the scale. And, man, when I listen to that song that he walks out to quite often, if you are who you say you are, a superstar, then have no fear. And I just feel like that is kind of epitom epitomizes uh, the way that his career has gone thus far. Let's wait for the wait here. Lupe Fiasco song, by the way. Oh, good job. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. You know, Laura, <laughs> his, that. he's been under a lot of pressure. That's what I mean. I think it's that line. If you are who you say mm -hmm. you are. Oh, boy, we got to. This dude don't even know what weight he fight. Why are we not <laughs> using <laughs> a digital scale? It, 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 well, it's like he's, he's moving it so far. It's like he had it at 125. This guy, Sean O'Malley, wants to get on the scale, see the weight, yeah. go get you, back to hydrating. He you doesn't know want to be like, He's irritated You right know what now. this is like to me? This is like the NFL. They still use the chains, right? Yeah. Like, instead of, uh, you could easily use a, a digital line. You think you could use I a digital mean, line in the NFL? 100%. I have There's no idea what a digital line even looks There's like. There's a chip in the ball right now, right? Like you, you, 135, the official weight for the we champ, go. Sugar Sean O'Malley. Oh he is locked in and ready to go. Pedro Munoz coming up next, I believe, as we have Dustin Poirier and Sean right, O'Malley. Next fighter who have to the scale weight. competing in a band of like how mad Sean oh, is. That's so a week, that extra yeah. minute and a half. Pedro Munoz. There's a very big eye roll behind those sunglasses. <laughs> the sunglasses Pedro, were a little bit heavy. They know. were. They were. That's a good point, actually. Uh, Pedro Munoz loving the idea of finally being able to fight in his backyard and definitely expecting the backing uh, from these Miami fans. Obviously, trains out of ATT. I think it's kind of 135. 135. 135. He's the 21st official weight for Pedro. Fight. And what's crazy? To, it's crazy to think how long he has been battling at the top of this very, very deep division. Who he has fought. I mean, incredible right, resume for to him. The scale competing Still in doing a prelim the damn thing. In the middleweight division, Michal Oleksiejuk. Dustin Poirier, by the way, is uh, hydrating a bit and will be joining us for an interview shortly. This is Mihal Olachechuk, part of the early prelims against Michelle Pereira. Olachechuk, a slight plus 124 underdog in this one. He is 7-4 uh, and four since entering the UFC in 2019, coming off that first-round knockout win last summer against Chidi and Joko 185, and the official weight for Mikhail Olachechuk. Late at 185, looking to string together back-to-back -to -back wins for the first time since 2021. Now we're just, we're moving right, right along. To the scale competing in a prelim in the women's flyweight division, Joanne Wood. 
So I have been a fan of Joanne Wood ever since she and I fought on the same card, and I am both happy and a little bit sad to know that this will be her last fight. She is retiring. I confirmed that with her, her manager, Danny Rubenstein. And Man, she has had an absolutely incredible career. Jojo. 16 UFC fights. She was on the Ultimate Fighter, fought at 115, fought at 125. An absolute savage coming off a win, and I just I hope great things for her in her right, future. Next fighter to Big the decision. scale, one of the best flyweights in the world at present, the number six ranked contender, the future, Macy Barber. What's up, guys? It's Macy Barber fighting out of Team Alpha Male in Sacramento, California. And my question to all three of you is, which one of you guys would win in a thumb war? I don't know what she oh. said because you talked to me in my ear right as she, she was asking She said, who would question. win in a thumb war? I feel, oh, in I the feel thumb like war. Okay. DC's got some big old thumbs, but I'm fast. I, I've got it, nails. Laura, I would pin you so fast in a thumb <laughs> war. It would be crazy. I um, stab 125, you. 125, <laughs> the official weight for Macy Barber. 125 for Macy Barber, who is on a massive run right yeah, now, looking is. to put herself into title contention. All right, next uh, athlete win to this the weekend. scale. He is the number one ranked UFC Bantamweight contender, weighing in as a backup for our championship. Main event, the machine, <laughs> Marab Dwalishwili. Marab Dwalishvili is the number one contender in his division. Corey, I know that you want that to be you too, but... Marab, after his win over Henry Cejudo, is waning as a backup fighter, making sure if somebody misses weight, he's ready and he's available. Man, good for him. Fights a couple weeks ago. They yeah. ask him to be the backup fighter. He makes weight again. 135. You know, him, man. He's the on a tear, and I can't even do it. He's impressive guy, isn't yeah. he? Yeah. Takedowns, man, and cardio is crazy. Yeah. It's because he's yelling all the time. <laughs> he's a pretty interesting <laughs> dude. His Instagram is fun. <laughs> it is. He's got a fun he's, Instagram. He, you know, he's doing a lot of things right. I think he does better with the ladies than we would all assume. <laughs> you did? Based on his All right, next man up competing Don't in the think? flyweight division out of Kazakhstan, Asu Almabaya. Yeah, he weighed in before uh, Cheeto. Does that tell you something about Cheeto? Well, Cheeto's probably cutting some weight. He's big, but Cheeto will make weight. I don't worry too much about Cheeto making weight. Here's Asu Almabaya, the 30 year old from Kazakhstan. Had an impressive UFC debut On last 26, August. 26, the official weight for Asu Almabaya. Making weight today. Okay. He won by rear naked choke against Ode Osborne in the second round. Of course, he's at uh, Kill Cliff with Henry Hooft and company. All right, back now to the women's flyweight division as we welcome Marina Moroz. Marina Moroz, the Iron Lady, opening up the show against JoJo Wood in Wood's last fight, as uh, Laura Sanko just mentioned. The Ukrainian, a minus 238. 126, favorites. the official weight for Marina Moroz. That was quick. 126, good to go. This is just her fifth fight in the last five years. Last time out against Karini Silva at uh, UFC 292. A little bit unlucky. She got submitted with All one right, next fighter second to left the in the scale first competing round. on the pay per view main card at UFC 299, the number 13 ranked. Hey UFC guys, it's your boy Kevin Holland here, fighting out of Team Looter MMA. Uh, DC, how much wrestling do you think will play into this fight? Or do you think I'll wrestle at all? You know, Kevin showed that he can, and he's improving mm -hmm. very quickly. Corey, how impressive are you with him Kevin Holland. with his improvement? Yeah. He's 170. yeah, I mean, Kevin's really doing a really awesome job, man. I think that the Next closest opponent the that he has opponent to MVP is going to be Wonderboy, which, debut. you know, hopefully in he gathers some data division, in and he can bring Michael into Benipay. this fight, but that's what it's looking like. This is the one and only Michael Venom Page MVP fighting out of London Shoot Fighters. Hey DC, what's your thoughts of British wrestling now since we came down to your gym? The official weight for Michael Venom Page. Michael Venom Page makes the weight. They came to my gym. He brought a kid in there that wrestled with my high schools and he did really good. And Michael Venom Page, I will say I am impressed with your friend. British right, wrestling overall. The stage back for the first for time in a long time. The number four ranked <laughs> women's flyweight contender, Caitlin Blonde Fighter Sermonara. Caitlin, newly named, or not newly married, but newly uh, renamed Sermonara. Um, haven't seen her in action for about a year and a half, and I was really impressed with how open she was during the media day about, about why she had that time off. She and her husband were trying to conceive. She was 125, going through the official way IVF for cycle. Caitlin she said she Sermonara. got up to 170. Um, it was a really, really tough time for her, and she said she actually took this fight as a mental break from dealing with the fertility struggle. So it just shows, you know, how difficult right, that has been for them. But excited to, the to stage, see her. The other half of the lightweight co-main event, the number 12 ranked contender, 
Benoit Saint-Denis. Well, this guy is about as big of a badass as you can possibly get. Former Special Forces, 5-1 and one in the UFC with five straight insane, sensational finishes. 155, Absolute, the official weight oh, for wow. Benoit Saint-Denis. <laughs> Absolute killer, does not flinch, and obviously the biggest opportunity of his fight career facing Dustin Poirier. I mean, that's a massive shoot up the rankings if he can get it done, but that is a very, very right, big next man up charged with kicking off the pay-per-view main card, the former undisputed and former interim Bantamweight champion of the world, the number four ranked contender, Piotr Jan. Yeah, kicking off the main card against Song Yudong. This is going to be a great fight. I think what a lot of people forget is that Piotr's just 31 years old. There's a lot of tread left on these tires. Mm. And they talk about the fact that, okay, he's lost three fights. His last three fights against Aljo, O'Malley, and, and Marab. He's fighting the top guys in the world. 35, the official weight for Piotr Jan. I mean, you, you throw in Corey, and you're talking about the three best guys in the division that he's faced. I mean, this is still, and O'Malley says it all the time, this is one of the most dangerous men in this division on the planet. Oh, absolutely. Tons of power. Very crafty. All right, next yeah. fighter Very sets away in, making game. his UFC debut here Saturday night in the heavyweight division, Robelis de Spain. Robelis de Spain, Cuban bronze medalist in the Olympic Games in Taekwondo. I said judo yesterday. I had it all wrong. But... <laughs> This guy is impressive. He's got to be about 6'7". He has an 87-inch reach. That's longer than Jones, longest in UFC history. His last... It's oh, a, it was only 84. So they're saying eight. Okay, well, it's listen. Can I give Where? the guy the rub? I mean, my can goodness. I give the guy the rub? Can I, give, can I make the guy even bigger than he is? I mean, come on, Hellcat. <laughs> Anyhow. I believe you. Thank you, Laura. You're welcome. 261, the official 261 weight for Robellis. For of Spain. Who Dan Helly... Last three fights have been 19 seconds. It seems as though total. his opponents, <laughs> total, I mean three, his opponents fight him in the way that it would look if you ever stepped to me. All right, next we make great for a <laughs> You know what I'm talking about, You don't think I'd make Undisputed it more than UFC I'm getting you out of there in like six, seven seconds. 11 ranked contender, Rafael <laughs> Dos Anjos. <laughs> Rafael Dos Anjos. Returning to 155 after a pair of uh, welterweight fights last year. Wayne in with the shades 156. on. 156, the official weight for RDA. Rafael Sanchez. Plenty of gas left in the tank for the 39-year-old, not planning on retiring anytime soon. He is a substantial underdog to Mateusz Gamrat on Saturday. All right, next fighter to hit the scale out, competing ever. in the men's bantamweight division, the Matrix, Kyler Phillips. You know, Kyler Phillips is a guy that I saw when I was coaching the Ultimate Fighter in... You always knew he was a bit special, right? But then at times, he never really put it together. Right now, Kyla Phillips is fighting the best that he's ever fought in the octagon. He comes from a really good team. 135. 135. For Kyler Phillips. Even when you talk to his teammates, guys like Sean O'Malley, they speak to how special this kid can be in the division. Let's see if we can continue to keep it rolling. But right, Kyle Phillips is doing a really scale, good job right now. Best yeah, in the absolutely. World, number seven next we have Song. I love Song. I think he's just such a sweet Songs guy. I think he's, you know, he claims himself to be the best boxer in the UFC, so I think we're going to find out tomorrow who is because yeah. Jan is a very good striker. I think, man, this is the fight that I'm most excited about on the card, to be honest with you. These guys are so incredible. Can I say something? You, you sound like you have a Bantamweight bias. You kind of sound like Dominic <laughs> Cruz a little bit. But you he's know, so you kind of. Like you know, I'm so nice. pretty invested in it for some reason. Yeah, you're invested. Song Yudong. Yeah. Song Yudong is such a sweetheart until he punches you upside the head. <laughs> exactly. like he's like the hardest punching guy in the, <laughs> the, the, pound in the whole UFC. I love this guy. Song Yudong. Blonde song, too. Blonde Let's song. See. Right, Let's next see. fighter to the scale, the number six ranked UFC lightweight contender, Mataj Gamrot. Man, I'm really excited for Gamrot as well. You know, one of my favorite fights in UFC history maybe might be Gamrot versus Sarukian. Is that how you say his name? Sarukian? Yes, Sarukian. Yes. Man, it was such a high-level fight just back and 156. forth. He's definitely a majorly technical Mataj guy. Gamrot. super fun to watch if you're really interested in, like, the, uh, you know, the technical side of martial arts. All right, we promised you Dustin Poirier and the diamond is with us now. Hopefully feeling pretty good, hopefully slowly but surely hydrating. DP, let me ask you this first. You've been on the show with us before. We have Corey Sandhagen here with us now. Do you have any advice for him on how to deal with uh, DC and Sanko? 
<laughs> Just don't grab DC's food, man. You'll yeah, yeah, yeah. you be in trouble. D, he grabbed my red beans. He getting it. If he put his hey. hand in my red beans, he getting it. Don't do it, bro. <laughs> uh, Dustin, it, uh, an interesting stare down with, uh, with you yesterday. It looked like you were staring right into his soul, and you kind of had a couple of nods. It was like three rounds of nods. What, what was going through your head during that stare down? Nothing really, man. Just let's go. You know, you here. I'm here. We know what we're here for. It's understood. I love that. You, you said that, that you didn't need this fight. You wanted this fight. Why? Because I want to right the ship. I've never lost two fights in a row. Every time I've I missed a bounce back. Every time I've ever stumbled, I've bounced back. So I put in, you know, another full training camp, fully focused, ready to perform. That's what this is about. Like, I'm, like I said, I don't need this fight. I do need this fight. I need this fight for me, you know, not not for all the stuff that comes with it. You know, DP, before I get to the question, boy, that shirt yesterday, hey, hey that shirt yesterday was on fire. Boy, you was looking good out there, Dustin, for you. I'm telling you, hey. I mean, boy, look good, man. Hey, Miami style, bro. You know me. You know me in these floral shirts. Me and RG always, always got it together. Yeah, my boy. DP, Benoit Saint-Denis, when you stare at him, that first face-off, right, when you're in his face like that, that always gives you an energy. What did you take from him? Because we saw yours, right? We saw your energy. What was the energy you took from Benoit Saint-Denis? It's, it's tough, man. It's, I don't really take a whole lot from these, these face-offs because I've seen guys super confident, super, you know, looking like they're ready to go and then fold the next day. And I've seen guys kind of shy and then show up the next day ready to die in there. So it's tough to say. You know, I, I won't know till tomorrow night when we touch you know, Dustin, when you get in there tomorrow and you know how hard these fights are always very difficult early. How much are you going to rely on that championship level experience to take this fight longer and show Sandini something that he hasn't experienced before? You know, once once we hit the third, fourth, fifth round, that's when, you know, by that time I've, I'll have his timing. I'll have his movements. I'll be flowing by then. And then I'll feel like I'll start to pull away. Um, but the beginning of the fight is, is me staying safe, being defensively responsible, getting into my rhythm, seeing how he's reacted to my feints and to my movements. So it's all calculation. You know, you know how this goes. Hey, Dustin, Corey here. Hey, man, I'm really excited to watch you live. Thanks a lot for, uh, you know, it's going to be really a pleasure and an honor to watch you, man. Um, what, what, what was it about fighting this far down in the rankings, because I could potentially be in the same position, that, uh, that really got you motivated about this fight? Honestly, when they called me with this guy's name, I wasn't that excited. I wasn't that motivated at, right off the bat. But then I kind of started looking inward and thinking, you know, well, hey, I do honor this, what I do, and I do respect this, this sport, if you want to call it a sport. Um, and that's how it goes. You know, I got to give these guys a crack in the top. Somebody gave me my shot. The division's kind of tied up. I've had a lot of big fights in a row. So it was just the timing of it. And, um, and also, I'm 35 years old. This is my 30th fight in the UFC. Let me toss myself in the fire with one of these young guys who, who's, you know, putting on these performances, finishing their opponents, winning five in a row. It's just the timing was right for me to test myself to see if, if I still belong in there with the best guys in the world. And it's time for him to test himself to see if he belongs in the upper echelon of the division. Beautiful, man. That's why we love you, man. So I guess I have to ask you, too, when you go into this fight, you do really good under chaos. You like fighting. Is that something that you're going to try to do? Of course. Of course, uh, that's where I do my best work. That's part of the reason why this fight came together. Because when they first, like I said, when they first uh, mentioned his name, I was like, ah, it doesn't really make sense. But then I was thinking, I was like, you know what? These are the kind of fights I want to be involved in. This guy goes out there. You know, you saw in his UFC debut how gritty, how durable, how tough. The never say die attitude. Um, it's going to be a chaotic fight. I wanted it to be five rounds, and I'm ready for five rounds of, of blood, sweat. You know, let's go. Dustin, you said it a second ago, 30 UFC fights. Have you allowed yourself a moment to celebrate just how, I mean, that is a massive accomplishment. I know you've got business to attend to this week, but have you given yourself even a second to kind of say, man, that, that's, that's incredible? For, yeah, me and Mike Brown. Mike Brown loves this sport, knows, this, knows a lot of stats. Uh, he's been a longtime fan. He knows a lot of things. So uh, talking to him about it this week while we were hanging around the house uh, during the weight cut and stuff, yeah, it's, it's a huge milestone, you know, uh, 30 fights in the UFC. Getting there is one thing. Being there fighting the toughest guys for 30 times is, is a whole nother. 
And it's it's International Women's Day, and I got to give a shout out to Jolie. I actually flew down here right behind her and had a chance to talk to her a little bit. And every time I talk to her, I'm just I'm I'm blown away by her. Honestly, like she's she's so beautiful, she's so smart, and she's such a freaking G about all this. How big of a part? I mean, you guys met when you were 14. So how big of a part of her of this journey has she been for you? She's been a huge part of it. She's 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 and she's been there from the beginning. Uh, she drove me to my first fight. I didn't have a car, you know. So my first amateur fight, she stayed in hotel in crappy hotel rooms with me, uh, fighting on the regional scenes, cutting weight. You know, like she's been there since the jump. So it's incredible to have her here, and and f to have her being part of this journey. I wouldn't be where I'm at w without the support. Hey, Dustin, don't let Laura try to make you cry, bro. She always do that. She always try to ask a question, try to make somebody cry on TV. Don't let Laura try to make you cry for him, man. She's freaking incredible. I love nah, her. Nah, nah, I'm good. <laughs> Laura Firestone. I mean, she is tough. Yeah, what's she doing, man? <laughs> Dustin, how did this she become... Was... So, sorry, go ahead, DP. No, uh, Laura, Jolie was telling me that uh, you were asking to switch seats. Somebody was was drilling her on MMA questions on oh the plane God, or something. Oh, my God. He would not leave her alone, Dustin. And he kept being like, I, got, I know this one guy that does MMA. I'm sure you know him. And like, this man would not quit talking to her. I was like, I'm going to have to jump in here hey, I and wish you save said, this woman. I appreciate that. No, of course. I had Did you try to, try to jump it. on a grenade for the homie? I appreciate I, I would have done it, It would have been nice to be like, her husband will kill you. Like, I, I, I was trying to drop those hints. You. I was like, he was like trying to <laughs> assume that she knew some regional level fighter. I was like, this is... This is freaking Dustin Poirier's <laughs> wife you're talking to. Say, her to. husband has a king of yeah. diamonds behind his ear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, tattoo, he will kill you. <laughs> DP, how did this become a five-rounder? Was that your doing? Yeah, I asked for it. I feel like the better fighter, uh, of course, there's more, more opportunity to be damaged over five rounds, and it's not good for your health, but uh, I feel like the better fighter wins uh, over distance. You know, of course, it takes skill to submit or knock somebody out early. But the longer the fight goes, the more things settle in and, and skills come out, the better fighter usually wins. And I feel like I'm better than these guys. All right, DP, thanks, man. Looking forward to seeing you fight tomorrow night. Good luck, and, and hopefully you're back on the show with us uh, after, after a big win. I'd love to be back with you guys. Thank you so much, man. I'm ready to go. Thanks, buddy. That is the Diamond, Dustin Poirier, 21 wins. I did not realize this was his... 30th fight until yeah, uh, doing a little crazy. research this week. That's absolutely amazing. He said that he's one of 13 fighters in UFC history with 30 fights on the resume. As we take a look at the numbers here for Dustin Poirier, uh, cannot wait to see him going tomorrow night. And what's uh, not going to be an easy fight. He's an underdog in this one, but he certainly has embraced that underdog role here this week. All right, back to the weigh-ins. And I believe we have tickets in Miami. Gilbert so Burns stepping on the stage. The number four ranked welterweight contender, Gilbert Dorino <coughs> Burns. Gilbert Burns always smiling like he always does, but this guy's an absolute savage. You know what I like the most about talking to Dorino was the other day he said, I am doing this. 171, the official weight. For 171 Gilbert Dorino for Gilbert Burns. Burns. He said, Damian Maya and Tyron Woodley gave me an opportunity to fight at the top of the division. I will not be a guy that sits on my ranking. That is why I am fighting Jack Della Maddalena. I love that. Iwan Kutalaba, 30-year-old from Moldova, turned 30 in January, and uh, already going into his eighth year in the octagon and uh i had in my notes that he'd settle down just a bit doesn't look like it there nope but uh at least you know he's uh, not painting himself green these days for the ceremonial weigh-in and not shoving guys anymore matured in his uh old age a little bit as he said curtis razor blades next we got my boy curtis b out of elevation fight team yeah man i'm really excited for curtis i think you know when you think of athletes and how well Curtis can move being that size. It's absolutely unbelievable. I think he's going to have a big weight advantage in this fight. And, you know, I really want to see Curtis do well in this one. I, I think he's improved so much through the years, and I'm really excited for him. 257, the official weight for Curtis Blades. Hey guys, it's Jack Della Madeline here, fighting out of Perth, Western Australia. 
DC, I know you've got a uh, thing for grapplers. <coughs> How do you think this one will play out? Uh, I think that Gilbert Burns is going to have to get some takedowns. Yeah. 170 for Jack Della. Look, man, this kid has been impressive. A lot of times when these guys come in here with so much expectation, it's hard to live up to. Jack Della, Della, Della Maddalena <laughs> has lived up to it and more, if you ask me. Yeah. This Jailson Almeida right here, this dude right here, was he thought about going back down to 205 when he originally got to the UFC, and he realized, wait, the heavyweights can't wrestle. So he's staying up, he's been winning, and now, honestly, with the way these things are working out, knowing that Jones and Miocic are going to fight, 241 for Jailson, if he can win, and he's impressive, Aspinall needs an opponent, and we're going to Brazil in May. That may work out to where this guy might get an interim title fight. So Jairus Almeida is fighting for a lot. Even Curtis Blades, being that Curtis Blades has that win over Tom Aspinall, even though it was by injury. Would that be the first interim title defense? I just found out that um, uh, the Bantamweight hit him to Raw, defended, defended the Bantamweight in title twice. In twice? Two times. I did not remember that. I, I know. That's crazy. Like, they told me he defended it two times. Huh. So Speaking it happened. of interim titles, Dustin Poirier held the interim title for a period of time, but he's never had the undisputed title. So that brings us to this. Dustin Poirier on my list, one of the best fighters to never hold undisputed gold, right? We, we rank our top five, no particular order, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to start with myself on this one. Oh, How about wow. Hendo, Dan Henderson? Three title fights, Pride Light heavyweight, middleweight champion, faced Rampage in a unification bout, lost that one, all right? He's on the list. You don't love that. <laughs> Alexander Gustafson. Three title fights, right? Push John Jones to the brink. Uh, you know, Pushed DC. You, to the brink. <laughs> he had me on the verge. I was crying. You know very well. Joe Benavidez has four title yeah. fights at flyweight. Lost that split decision to Demetrius Johnson. Uh, then lost to him again. Fell short against Davis and Figueredo twice. So four title fights for Joe Benavidez. Chael Sonnen, your new podcast partner. Three title fights. Um, and then finally. So this dude is like. You 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 just did not understand the assignment. <laughs> you just don't go and find everybody had the most title fights and never won, and call them the best fighters that I'm never won. I'm telling you why I'm trying to be fast so this we can get to your list because Michael Venom Page is getting set to All join right, us ahead, in please. just a minute, and Dustin Poirier, he was the. What, what don't you like about my list? It's a good list. It's what a you're great doing list. I know reasons, exactly bro. what you Googled. We though. know what you're doing. You Googled and they, who had the most title <laughs> That's fights. That's not true. Win. That's like, not true. That Justin Poirier didn't have the most title bro, fights. Best fighters to never hold an undisputed belt. I love Chael, but I'm not going to sit here and say Chael was one of the best fighters to never hold a belt. He's not one of the top five guys? No, bro. Right. No. Dan Henderson, yeah. <laughs> you don't like anybody else on this list right here? I think Joseph Benavidez, yeah. Alexander Gustafson, and Dan Henderson. It was so, really so the point. fact that you put Chael on it that really just, I mean, we love Chael. So, go ahead. so okay, Chael's the I, only one. I, wow. I'll just go. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. It's okay, but I know exactly what you do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've got uh, Justin Gaethje. He's got to be on there. Interim champ, the guys that he's fought. Boy, you make I'm, not that saying, face? I'm not saying, I'm just watching, I'm just watching. <laughs> Tony Ferguson, interim champ, incredible run from 2013 to 2019, 12 fights undefeated. Joseph Benavidez, four title fight opportunities. One of the greatest flyweights ever, never got his, never got his gold. Alexander Gustafson took John Jones to the brink, took DC to the brink, three title fight opportunities, and Dustin Poirier. Not, not that they're ranked, but Dustin has to be on this list, and I might even put him at number one if they were ranked. That's funny how you can talk about title fight opportunities, but I talk about it and no, suddenly I, mean, I don't know no, what you're talking about. Yeah. What I mean, not uh, like about the, the BMF title is an undisputed championship. Hey, well, you're going to hate... Undisputed not. BMF championship. You're, you're going to hate my list, then, and now I'm actually a little afraid to read it after, <laughs> uh, after all of that. But I got Donald Cerrone. All right. Mm. Yeah. All right. Uriah <laughs> Faber. <laughs> all right. Uriah Faber. Justin Gaethje. That's an okay one. Alistair Overeem. Let's go. And Joseph Benavides. You, you have to. All right. Yep. Three Corey high fives out of five. Sanhagen. Let's go. Three. Coming with the right dude. Here's, here's the thing. All right. I put no interim <laughs> champion. I think that if you, these guys that have won interim championships, I don't put them. They had a moment in there with a belt getting wrapped around. That was around. literally the not whole, the assignment. The whole that question is undisputed gold. Joseph Benavides proved to be one of the best fighters for a really long time that didn't win the belt. Yoel Romero was one of the best fighters for a very long time, fought for the belt multiple times, but also was one of the absolute best in the world. 
Alistair Overeem, for a long time, was one of the best in the world, never got a championship. Uriah Faber was one of the best in the world, never got a championship. And Alexander Gustafson. We have similar people, but I'm talking. I didn't put interim champions. Dustin Poirier, yeah, those how guys, do you not have they're Dustin champions. Poirier. They're champions. It literally says and It doesn't matter. I think you guys, you, you guys, that it, was it's literally pitch and the pennies whole here. Point of no, the it's pitch and pennies. These guys had their moments. Dana wrapped the belt around their waist. These guys have held gold. I don't care if Not Justin Gaethje threw it on the ground. He was a champion, and you could never take that from him. Justin Gaethje is a two-time champion as much as I care. He's a BMF champion, too. He's a two-time champion. You want to put Justin Gaethje on there like he's never had a moment? I'm talking about guys that were great that didn't have a moment. That, yeah. was, that, that wasn't that wasn't the, the game. Though. Sanko you, told me while you were talking, she's not going to play the game if you're just going to change the rules all the time. You buddy. did say you did make some good points there. Thank you, Corey. Yeah, you did. I'm you telling did. you, see, I, I, he, did. See, Corey, he did. If you, he did. Corey, let me ask you a question. How <laughs> how would it be if you were an interim champ? You still feel like a champ, wouldn't you? You got <laughs> no. that moment. See. No, he not just really. said it. That's that's the point. So you want to take the belt? I was on board with the idea of if you fight for a belt and you lose, then you maybe don't get to make that list. I'm on board with that idea. No, no, no. Listen, Corey. Justin Gagey told me when he got the interim belt and he threw it on the ground, he was like, God dang it, I wish I didn't do that. <laughs> Thinking back, he's like, hey, that was a belt, you know? Yeah, but meanwhile, Dustin Poirier says there's only one thing he's never had. He's accomplished everything except undisputed gold. Oh, Has to mean something, right, champ? Him saying that was the entire reason that we did yeah. that assignment, but yeah. whatever. <laughs> All right, here's a look at the uh, the weigh-in stage. Cheeto Vera, one oh, half dude. of our main event, is one of those who has yet to weigh in. Remember, the weigh-in window between 9 and 10. If you miss that window, if Cheeto misses that window, he can weigh in once in the next hour after that. He cannot weigh in twice. If you want the ability to weigh in twice, you have to weigh in in the next 29 minutes. So we will keep you posted on Cheeto and Josh Parisian and Vergara and uh, the rest of these guys as they are uh, waiting to weigh in. One guy who has already weighed in is a man who is set to make his UFC debut after a uh, very nice run in Bellator, Michael Venom Page is with us now, and you uh, you got to see the UFC faithful out here for uh, the entire fight week. Is, is this the biggest difference for you as you're set to make your debut for the first time under the UFC banner? Yeah, you know what, for me, it's just the uh, the professionalism, the organization. The For me, the fights are the same, but everything that goes on behind the scenes is completely different. You guys over here are... Uh, a step above the rest, a, a, a giant step <laughs> above the rest. Let, let me ask you about what you've talked about in terms of who you would like to see next. I know you've talked about uh, how big a fight between you and Leon Edwards could be in the U.K., but there has to be some other guys that are on your radar as well if you, uh, if you win tomorrow night. To be fair, I've, I've, I've always been honest about I don't care to chase other people's uh, spotlight. I, I generate and create my own spotlight, and then the flies, they're attracted to it. So whatever happens, and whoever gets in my way of getting to the top is, uh, is going to feel uh, what MV, of being in front of MVP feels like. What, uh, what would you say you've enjoyed the most? I know you've talked about the professionalism, everything being you know, up another level, but what has been the most fun part, I guess, of being part of the UFC family now? You know, it's just being a fan of the, you know, this this brand for for such a long time, being inspired to even make that uh, transition from kickboxing to mixed martial arts. Uh, I've literally just been sat here, just been sat in awe, just looking around because these are all the stuff that I'd watch on camera for many many years, and now I'm and now I'm here and and, and living it. Um, for me, it's I'm. I feel like a, a tourist in a new country. I'm just, just walking around with a big smile on my face always. Anybody who has followed your career knows that you are, I mean, it is literally just a constant highlight reel from you. Do you feel pressure, I guess, you know, being in the UFC? And there are some fans who only watch the UFC, so you might be new to some eyes. Do you feel pressure to go out there and sort of live up to that reputation or is it about you know getting out there getting a win no matter what and just sort of establishing yourself in this new organization no my my style is entertainment i don't have to land a punch i don't have to land a kick and yet people are just in awe about what i'm doing how i'm doing it the movement uh the uh, you know 
my my dancing, the smiling, how present I am. You know, the talking across to my opponent. There's there's so much I bring to the table that the the cherry on top is you know getting that KO kick or that KO uh, punch, which you know becomes a highlight. But then my celebrations, my walking, I, I bring so much to the table that yeah, I really don't have to worry about. Uh, um, stressing myself about having to do something specific. Just go out there, be the best me on the day, and everybody will be drawn to that. MVP, when you guys ran into each other at the hotel, it was very friendly. But yesterday at the press conference, there was a different energy. What did you see in that interaction with Kevin Holland and how different it was? Because it was intense when you guys walked face to face. Did you like it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, it, we're getting close to the fight now. You know, we're getting close to game time and we both feel it but I think he was feeling that weight cut a little bit more because I, I'm, I'm, I was just chilling and uh, I was seeing it stressing him out and that just gave me a little bit more added energy he doesn't uh, he wasn't looking in my eyes in the way in the way in uh, sorry in the, in the press conference uh, he kind of looks down but I don't know if that's a common thing but uh, I, I want to you know they say the eyes are the window to the soul and I want to see his soul what do you believe is the ideal approach to fighting Kevin Holland, and do you expect him to try to grapple with you a little bit? We know that he's a real high-level grappler, right? Submitted Kiesa and all those other guys. Do you think he'll try to wrestle with you, or do you think he'll chance it by standing against you like he did against Wonder Boy Thompson? Yeah, I think um, plan A is him chancing it because he he's going to want to experience what he's seen before, but so many egos and fighters will be like, that guy can never do that to me. And when it starts happening, he's going to resort to plan B, C, D, everything else. When it's still not happening, he'll, he'll cave. And I love seeing that, that there's a mental aspect. There's a certain point in a fight that I see in an, in an opponent where they've given up almost and they kind of accept in their fate and they just want out. And then I give them that way out, usually by something crazy. MVP, I can tell that you're really locked in, man. You look super excited to be here. I'm really curious, man, did you ask for Kevin Holland or were you asking for opponents maybe higher ranked or lower ranked or, or, or how did that become Kevin Holland? To be fair, I don't, again, I genuinely don't really ask for opponents. Uh, you know, when we spoke with the UFC initially and just in negotiation, they were like, what are your, what are your goals here? What are you planning on? How do you see your career? And I said, I just want to be in the deep end. There's no point in me doing anything else. I've spent many, many years becoming a, an established uh, mixed martial artist. And to, to get to this point, throw me in the deep end and let me, let's see if I uh, sink or swim. And it was up to them to throw the names out. They, put, they picked Kevin Holland and, you know, what a great opponent, what a great start. Great, man. Yeah, so I guess next question then. So I've been watching you for a really long time. You're one of the few guys that I watch outside of the promotion. Um, Thank you. Are you going to still let that, you know, personality shine while you're in there? Still, you know, uh, talk a little trash, do your thing while you're in there. Is that going to be amplified or are you going to tone that down? Because like you said, you are fighting the best of the best now. Yeah, um, to be fair, it's, it's all the same to me. Uh, I've sparred so many um, UFC fighters just away from the, the cameras and I'm the same in the gym you know when I'm sorry my, my when I'm sparring my teammates I don't know how else to be so I can only uh, be MVP and even when I crossed over to mixed martial arts and I was very unsure about how well I would do because I you know I had no understanding of the sport but in my head I was like whatever I do I, I have to do it in my way you have to do it my way you have to do it with my style I have to do it with my swag if I wasn't able to do it in that first fight, yeah, you wouldn't have seen me here now. And yet that first fight, uh, you know, that, that blew up. You know, me landing a crazy kick, standing there. I was able to do it with my swag, my energy. And I knew in that moment that, you know, MVP is alive in mixed martial arts. Michael Venom Page making his UFC debut tomorrow night here in Miami. Good luck, my friend. Thank you so much, guys. Pleasure to speak with you guys. All right, back to the weigh-ins. We had five fighters Michelle left. Pereira. Here is Michelle Pereira. We have Michelle Pereira here. Horrible at saying that last name. Uh, <laughs> Roll the R. <laughs> on a six-fight win streak, really unique style. I think he's been doing karate or taekwondo since he was a young kid. It gives him a really unique, hard-to-figure-out style. Really excited to watch him. I, I, I love when striking is unique but also really efficient and i think that that's what he brings to the table and i'm really excited for this one he definitely has kind of like reined it in just enough 
to make it even more you know effective than originally was. I feel I'm like his for that one. teeth are especially white. <laughs> he looks, he looks good. <laughs> uh, we were talking to Michael Venom Page a moment ago about UFC uh, making his debut. He's going to be fun to watch. Check this out. Not your conventional mixed martial arts. Michael Venom Page. That guy is super talented. I mean, he's extraordinary. I'm gonna give you a show every single time. Listen, you man better pattern up because I come different. Venom throws all this wild stuff, almost like a fencer. Like dives in on you and pops you. Doesn't matter where you put me on the card, people are only gonna be talking about that thing that MVP did. I don't know who you think you're talking to. I know you're shining at me. I'm a sniper. I just need one moment to catch him. Oh! Wow! If you haven't seen Michael Page fight, you're in for something special. Reality kicks in when I kick you in the face. I'm the full package. I'm going to give you a show, and it's the MVP show. Hop in. Definitely one of the most anticipated debuts in a little while. What's that look on your face? Like, what is going through your mind? I just right got now? this. My, I don't. You don't I mean, like your list? I mean, my list might have only <laughs> two not? people from the last ten years. Oh, is it, is, did, <laughs> like, did your assistant? I thought it was uh, top your fifteen. I thought it was list? fifteen years. I thought it was fifteen years. It is fifteen. It is fifteen. My but card says top ten, last ten years. We changed it. They changed it. Yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. Probably thank God. for you. Hey, <laughs> maybe if you weren't playing video games during our conference calls, you would know what's going on. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. We know. All right. Most so, anticipated debuts in the last uh, ten to fifteen years. Ten to fifteen. Whatever your case may be. Me? Yeah. All right. First, and I don't. I, this is listed wrong. It's backwards. <laughs> I thought that was number one. But Ronda Rousey. <laughs> Okay, okay, five people. So Ronda Rousey, do you guys remember that? When she came from Strike Force, the the how excited people were to see her. Nick Diaz, I, I, I know he, they said not to put Nick Diaz, but Nick Diaz when he left Strike Force was the absolute best. I know he had been here before, but yeah. when you return, it is a <laughs> debut. That's yes. not. It's sorry. literally not. I'm sorry. It's not a debut. You're just making it's a, a debut. It's a debut. It's a debut. It's literally His not a debut. return debut. <laughs> Return, UC 44. His, his return debut was <laughs> so exciting. Debut. It was so exciting to okay. see him come yeah. back. Okay, then I have yeah. Alistair Overeem because you remember Overeem? <laughs> Overeem was so big and he kicked Brock Lesnar in the side. I was like, oh my God, Alistair Overeem is the GOAT. MVP, I'm really excited about that one. And Justin Gaethje. You remember when Justin Gaethje and Michael uh, Johnson fought? Yeah. We thought, we're like, what is this guy? Who is he? Like, is he really as good as he looked in the World Series of Fighting? Because he, he fights guys that aren't, you know, we didn't think they were that good. Obviously, they were really good. They were pretty and good. Justin Gaethje was really good, too. And he's been really good since he got here. So, yeah, those are my five. Just, but I was most impressed with Nick Diaz's re-debut. Just <laughs> you so you're see? aware, his actual debut was in 2003. Three. Yeah, but his re-debut is his, the one I'm talking about. His original <laughs> assignment was 10 years. We pushed it back to 15 for he him. He's like, can't. ah, fuck it, I'm going to go 20. He's still <laughs> All right. Hoist Gracie. That's my favorite. <laughs> Best debut of last 10. My, okay, my list, again, not in any particular order. Uh, Jose Aldo, because when the WEC got absorbed, why are you waving me off? He was the king of the WEC and then went, came in here and ran shop as well. Ronda Rousey, to your point, it wasn't just about her being in the mm -hmm. UFC. It was what it represented oh to goodness. all of us females on International Women's Day. We should play a drinking game. How many times I mentioned that, that oh, today? When Ronda came on International Women's Day? No, today's International no, no, Women's no, no, Day. No, 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 no. When Ronda came, oh, my goodness. I was so inspired. Were you? Oh, my goodness. And on International <laughs> Women's Day to list her that high. Yeah. On International Women's Day for me to list her that high. I know. I'm inspired. Yes. Justin Gaethje, <laughs> like you said, coming over from World Series of Fighting. All the knockouts. Uh, insane debut. Alistair Overeem. A lot of that had to do with the matchup with Brock Lesnar, right? That was, we could not wait to see that fight happen. I put Chris Cyborg and Kayla Harrison 
tied in a slot because I couldn't pick one over the other. Chris Cyborg coming to the UFC was wild. She was the most feared woman in all of the, the history of MMA to have that fight with Amina Nunes. And Kayla Harrison, I'm sorry she has more Olympic medals than you, but... <laughs> She is. What, what are you talking? That was planned doing? all week. She's yeah. been planning that. Don't one. They try to tell me, hey Corey. They try <laughs> to tell me in your head. They always tell me stuff like, "Don't hijack the show." But I gotta say it. Okay. I gotta say it. It was five. It was. It was five, and now it was six. And she put three women. She's gotta be equal. You know, like, hey, Listen. let me get them even. She made sure, <laughs> right? Come on, come on. You put six in. And I also hate when people say Alistair instead of Alistair. His name is Alistair, and you guys are just too smart. He probably. Do you say Alistair? I call him Uberim. Okay. Ubrim, let me just say something, okay? Kayla Harrison has 39 medals in global competition. Oh, my God. 39, whether it's PANS, world competition, Olympics, whatever. That woman, I'm so excited to have Laura, her Laura, don't do me like that, please, because now you're 39. just really cutting me. I ain't got 39. <laughs> Laura's cutting deep, man. You're 39. Corey, She's you're good. up. Don't listen. Just do your list. Don't right, listen right. to DC. Don't look at DC. Yeah. Just, just I have it. Kayla Harrison also. Yeah. I think that she's going to be. <laughs> high five. I thought it was such a curveball. Yeah. yeah. I get a high five. Yeah, you don't I get, get a high five. Whatever. I think it's such a curveball. I'm like super excited for her. I got Michael Chandler on here, even though I wasn't really, he wasn't really on my radar there for a while. When he came in, he like yeah. blew it out of the water. Who did he make his debut against? Hooker. Hooker? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely phenomenal. Eddie Alvarez, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Justin <No> Gaethje. <laughs> I've been watching Justin Gaethje for a really long time. Obviously, I I think I was at the gym with Gaethje when I was about 18 years old. Wow. So I've been watching Gaethje throw people around in the cage for years and years and years now. So I was super excited for that one. Uh, and then MVP, because like I said, he's one of the few guys that I watched outside of the promotion. and. Uh, I'm really excited to see how he actually does. And that makes him very important because Corey watched him. I agree. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Uh, so the original assignment was 10 years, and I submitted my list, and then for whatever reason, they changed it to 15 years. <laughs> I kept my 10. <laughs> so Jose Aldo, Ronda Rousey aren't on here, but that's why, because I kept it to 10. Uh, Israel Asanya, great kickboxer, did MMA undefeated, came over. We're excited for him. Debuted in China. Eddie Alvarez, king of the streets, who was champion of basically every organization before he came here, had that great win against Michael Chandler before he came here. Chris Cyborg, the GOAT of women's MMA, making her debut. How about CM Punk? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> wow. How, who sells that many pay-per-views in their debut? I talk Brock anticipated yeah. by Brock the Lesnar. masses. Anticipated by the masses. Uh, Who's bigger than CM Punk? Uh, oh, man. Uh, Anticipated uh, by the masses. That is, that is not a terrible point. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's hard who, to disagree with. Who it. is that? Yeah. Who is CM Punk? CM Punk. CM Punk. Uh, who uh, is that? His uh, debut was talked about for years. Uh, it was all ballyhooed. And who yeah, doesn't did. love watching a fake tough guy get beat up by a real tough guy? I forgot that somebody on my day list. That was so satisfying for us who don't watch pro wrestling. Maddie didn't have CM Punk. You have somebody else. Who'd you forget? You forgot Hannah CM. Cyphers. You remember when Hannah Cyphers made her UFC <laughs> debut? <laughs> forgot oh, Hannah. Was it 22 years ago? <laughs> Korean Zombie versus Rodriguez Card, and she had the most perfect interview. <laughs> November 2018. It was the perfect interview post fight. Denver, Colorado. Altitude. Run the tape. Everything. Run the interview. <laughs> Run the tape. Hannah Cypher. Run the interview. <laughs> You are a piece of work. And you know, here's the good thing, is that now, if you agree with DC or you disagree with DC, you can let your feelings known. UFC in studio on X, on Instagram, on TikTok. It's a new handle that we just started. We want to hear from you. UFC in studio. Tell DC how smart he is or tell him how dumb he is all at the same time. He wants to hear from you. UFC in studio. Check it out right now. All right, we do have somebody weighing in. Cheeto's in. Cheeto is in the building and step into the scale right now, one half of our main event. Marlon Cheeto Vera. Uh-oh. Looking like Ecuadorian Jesus. Yeah, and Cheeto Vera's got the black sheet of death right now, the black curtain. Let's hope that he gets on the scale at the right weight. Because Cheeto Vera's worked long and hard for this. So many people are excited about this. That scale kind of went up, but it looks like it's cracking. 135. 135 for Cheeto. Yep, it for shot Marlon up. Cheeto Vera. But then it blocked. A dude started doing the sign of the cross on the and scale. And with that, your you UFC know it was tough. Mm -hmm. That looked like a tough weight cut. Yeah, it looked like a tough weight cut. 299 is official. 
All right, we are uh, we're in good shape. With Cheetah, how, how much does that how much does that take out of you, Corey, when you have a tough cut like that? I mean, you have time though, right? Like it takes it takes a lot out of you, but he's got, I mean, what? 50 hours, I mean, I'm 40 hours. I feel like, I feel like these days hours. they have the rehydration process, the refueling process so figured out. Down. Back in the day, it was like we were eating pasta and all sorts of stupid stuff right out the gate. They've got it figured out where you slowly but surely start mm. integrating foods and, you know, in the certain order. So he'll be all right. We, we've talked in previous shows about fighters coming from regions or country and representing that country. Cheeto Vera is the biggest fighter from his country of Ecuador. And there were about 40 Ecuadorian Crazy. media members here this week, 40, all covering him. And when he had the press conference or when he was part of the press conference, he, he sounded like the fans thought he was the ace side of that matchup mm -hmm. with the Sugar Show, right? There were Cheeto chants, and it seemed to be even a little disarming for, uh, for Sean O'Malley. But th the weight of this country is on his shoulders right now. This is a big deal for Cheeto and, and all of Ecuador. Yeah, I mean, it definitely seems so. Ecuador, you know, they, got, they have another fighter out of there, Carlos Vera. But I think outside that, it's really only two guys. So when you got a whole country supporting you, that's a really big deal to them. And then especially because of all of the stuff that's going on in Ecuador, I think that this one, you know, this one means a lot for them. Yeah, it means a ton for the country. It means a lot for Cheeto. And it's a big moment because we have seen this building for a really long time. Cheeto Vera was on Tough Latin America. That was in 2010 or 11. 10 or 11. Michael Morales also is really good now. I was speaking to one of the media members about that, and they're very excited about him. But Cheeto is a guy that... We have seen for a long time, and honestly, you never expected him to be in this position. He was speaking about a, a, a time back in London after he lost to Davy Grant where he was asking everybody if he was going to get cut. Yeah. Right? He said he went to, he was crying, asking any UFC person he could find whether or not he was going to get cut. He said then he went to Sean Shelby. And he asked Sean, after he had asked 30 people, whether or not he was going to get cut. Sean goes, Sean goes, let me think about it. He goes, then I got really scared. And then he said they gave him one more fight. If you win, you know, if not, it's going to be time to move on. And he won that one. And he won. And he won. And he won. And he won. And now he's put himself in position to be the champion. And, and, and I'm sorry, you, you saw, I don't remember his countdown or embedded just how appreciative and grateful he yeah. was of this moment because all of he's gone through. I mean, that's exactly it. I mean, the, the length of his journey, I didn't even know that story, but that's incredible to hear. But he beat the right guy. He beat the right guy to make this moment happen. And regardless of how you feel like that first fight went, whether it was, you know, injury, yada, yada, he landed a kick that affected Sean O'Malley that ended up affecting the rest of the fight. And... When you, when you seize those moments, when you have them, you create these opportunities later for you. And he had to do the work in between. And whether you believe this is the, the rightful number one contender or not, he is the guy of the moment because of who the champion is. And therefore, he does deserve to be here. And I'm excited to see it because when you're the only guy who's beat the champ, I mean, it's, it's, champions need rivalries to be, to, for their story to be complete. And I feel like that's something that Sean necessarily hasn't had because mm -hmm. he's had the weird fight with Pedro Munoz and the storyline was always, he's, you know, he's being given easy guys, whatever. He needs a real rival at his level mm -hmm. to, for us to understand how great he is. Because even the Aljamain Sterling win, you still have some haters being like, oh, well, he, well, he caught him. Well, yeah, he did you catch know, him. That's right. what he does. You know what kind that's of what he sucks, does. <laughs> that, that really is unfair to Sean O'Malley. You don't become the champion by just getting layup matchups. Yes. It doesn't work that way. No, it doesn't. You're going to fight somebody really, really good. And he did that against Peorian, and he fought Aljamain Sterling. So it's not... I, I'm telling you, I have heard that for a real long but time. But is, is, is it fair to say people weren't buying in until he fought and no, beat Piotr and you, then you yes. beat Aljo? It's the same thing but when Aljo won the title. The way he still, won the title, I get it, they weren't they were buying still, Aljo until he came back and they, beat Piotr again. Hellcat, they were still saying he lost to Piotr Jan. Yes, exactly. They were still saying he lost to Piotr Jan. Oh, the UFC chose to let him win. 
It's the most absurd thing. They no, nobody wants to give this kid his credit. I thought O'Malley won that fight. Yeah, I, 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 I thought too. that he won that fight. They, yeah. There was a. But do Very you close, remember? But, but do won. you remember the uprising of people that were like, "Oh, he lost to the UFC choke." They, this kid does not get his just due in regards to who he is as a fighter, partly because of how it started and because of how fast it's been. It's been very fast, and he's been very dominant. All right. We do have uh, more fighters uh, set I like to how win. animated you got just then. Well, because really? He knows me. his Highway stuff division. now. Now he's, like, bowing up against He's up to me. Yeah. Bob got slapped. Oh, really? <laughs> Bring it. All right, C.J. C- Vergara. <laughs> C.J. Vergara. Yeah, I mean, he had that wild comeback against the one guy. Um don't have his uh, da silva where he was major majorly hurt and then pretty much ran around the cage and then he looks a little worried Uh uh-oh not looking good (laughs) that look on your face that scared look yeah yeah you know what's coming what was it 126 points. I thought they said 127. Yeah. 127. Oh, 127. All right. Not, not that bad. But again, that bad. now he's within the hour, right? 127 for he's CJ missed before, though. He's missed twice before. Twice. He's missed twice before. Yeah, but does he push this to 1055 now? Does he go to lose this? It's only a pound. Well, we'll find out. I mean, he can certainly yeah. do that. It's only a pound. Well, he's going to need to. I mean, you can't miss th- wait three times. My, they don't love that. My guess is, see, if he didn't have to come before 10 o'clock, he would still keep sweating. He would still just keep sweating. Because he still looks weight. like he's sweating. Yeah, he looks fine. He's got to get his stuff back on right now. The plastic's got to go back on. Yeah. The gear's got to go back on. You got to keep stay as hot as you possibly can and just get back to work. Don't let the sweat stop yeah. and then have to, to put the work again. to get it re going again. Yeah, which that's he, almost impossible. Oh, yeah, and he already had right, to next do it. Once. To the scale competing in the light heavyweight division, Felipe Monstro Linz. Felipe Linz, uh, light heavyweight <clears throat> Felipe Linz is a bad, bad man. Let me tell you something. Made the move to 205 in April of 2022, and ever since then, nice three fight win streak. Had that uh, first round knockout of OSP last 206. February. 206. The official weight for Felipe Lins. Made the weight. He just really seems like he's putting things together at light heavyweight. Another ATT standout. Um, it's kind of those guys you're like, man, if you had if you had started out in the UFC uh, at light heavyweight, you know, what would we be seeing now? But obviously won the PFL tournament at um, at heavyweight, so had some success there as well. Guys, it's 9:56. Mm-hmm. We only have mm-hmm. one fighter. Uh, left to weigh in. That is heavyweight Josh Parisian. And there's only been one heavyweight in the history of the UFC <laughs> that hasn't made weight. So we should Wait, be pretty good. Uh, Justin Taffa. Yes, Willis. it was. Good Willis, job. No. Good memory. Yeah. Taffa? Yeah. yeah. Taffa, um, Justin Taffa. All right. You guys uh, ready for a little you better? We'll keep you updated on CJ Vergara, by the way. Well, this so, guy needs to come make, make weight right now. So, no, he has. Well, so Parisian has three minutes. Oh, he can, yeah. He can also yeah. go till. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, Okay, so here's the deal on you better. It's like you're a coach and you're talking to a fighter. I'm going to throw out the name of a fighter. It's going to go a little something like this. Daniel Cormier, (laughs) you better know that when you're doing a podcast with Chael Sonnen, (laughs) his personality is far bigger than yours. So all you can do is spew fact. We can't have two guys up there who are saying things that aren't true. You have to be factual. All right, so something like that. Okay, you guys got it? Good. Okay, here we go. Let's start, <laughs> let's start with Sean O'Malley, DC Go. Sean O'Malley, you better get going very quickly. You got to get Cheeto on his back foot. Don't allow for him to find his rhythm. Hey, I know a guy that did this to Cheeto Vera, and he won very convincingly. You have to do that same thing. Don't let him build into the fight. Sean O'Malley, you better take a note from our dear friend Corey Sanhagen. It's really hard to do these second because I'm going to say a lot of the same stuff. You need to get, you have to get your volume going. You got to get in his face and you have to attack his legs. That first fight, you landed some tremendous calf kicks early in that fight. They were starting to have an effect. Go back to that. Get it done. All right, Corey, it's your turn. Let's go Cheeto Vera. Cheeto Vera, you have to stay away from the right hand. And you have to start quicker than you typically start. Sanko. Oh, that was very succinct. That was good. That was good. That was good cornering, though. You want to be called, like. Yeah, it yeah. was like a rapid fire. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was not ready for that to be over. <laughs> Cheeto Vera, you have to win 
the moments of this fight. That is what you are so good at doing. Let Sean win some of the minutes. You have to win the moments. Be defensively sound. Make your reads. And then at the right moment, you land the power shots. And by the way, you got to attack the base of Sean O'Malley. Cut off that lateral movement. Attack the base. Work from there. Get it done. I'm just going to end them all with... Get, get it done. It done. <laughs> get it done. And do that with your hands like get that. Like, yeah, very. Power very. triangle. All right, Corey, Dustin Poirier. Dustin Poirier, you better make this thing dirty, man. You better, you know, you're fighting someone that isn't as experienced as you. That even sounds weird saying that about <laughs> Dustin Poirier. Who, who am I to tell Dustin Poirier what he better do? <laughs> but Dustin Poirier, try to make it dirty, man. Make this thing about experience and not about fighting. And do your thing, man. DP, you better remind this kid. You better remind this kid Lafayette is in the house. You better <laughs> remind this dude who Dustin Poirier is. Look, one of the greatest moments that I like watching you fight was when you hit Connor, bang, bang, and you did. I got your timing. Mm -hmm. You better show Benoit Saint Denis very early that you got him figured and that there's a different level between 12, 3, and then ultimately number one. BDS, you better. Try to keep this thing clean, and I know that you can get dirty as well, too, but just know that you're fighting someone that can fight in those types of fights. He's experienced. You need to keep this thing clean. You need to make it about fighting and not about grittiness. Kevin Holland. I'm going to go back to this. <laughs> Kevin Holland. You can't do that. Why not? You know what I that like, is? It's like a very powerful... <laughs> no, you know what that is? <laughs> Don't flip it upside down. You, they, you can't do that. Keep it, they tell you in television news you can't do that. Really? I never went to broadcasting school. It's the signal for vagina. Well, it's International <laughs> Women's Day, uh. so I'm going to just do this all day. Okay. Kevin Holland, you better. <laughs> no, Laura, no, please stop. It's making me very uncomfortable. I don't it's like it. I just don't like it. I should be able to make like a her. vagina symbol with my hands. Wow. Even while I'm cornering someone. <laughs> Kevin Holland, you need to be fundamental, okay? You need to rely on the, the basics of your game. We know you like to go out there and talk. We know you like to go out there and be flashy. <laughs> but in this fight, you got to keep the fundamentals and grapple, okay? <laughs> grapple MVP. We all know. We've seen it, him struggle with that in, uh, in that other promotion that will remain nameless. Mix it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> dude. Okay. MVP. That's, wait, that's wait. You, okay. you need a beer. Oh, we do need yeah. a beer. It's just getting yeah. a little All worse. All right, let's get this. Let me get this. We need more so, a reason to start guys, being dirty, let not me just please, naturally. Can I, please, <laughs> can I please give MVP? MVP, live this, man. Enjoy it. Enjoy the walk. Enjoy the moment you deserve that you have fought so long to get here. Live in it. But once, you, once that octagon door closes, be Michael Venom Page. Be spread stance. Be popping Kevin Holland. Make sure you keep him at range, though, because he is the guy that holds the grappling advantage. Be ready to defend takedowns, but just be Michael Venom Page, man, and just soak it all in because it is a very, it's a different level, and it's awesome. Jack Della, you better... Keep this thing on its feet, man. Gilbert Burns is an absolute animal if he takes you down. If he takes you down early and he has three, four minutes to try to find a submission, that's a really tough ask to not get submitted in that amount of time. Jack Della, keep the thing on your feet. Make it maybe a little bit dirty, but still stay technical. And I think that you'll come out with the win. All right, good work. Yeah, you did good. I got good. International. Hey, he's a little, but he's full of himself. Corey. Corey? <laughs> oh my God, telling Dustin Poirier what to do? Oh, no. Okay, so Corey, now you're telling Dustin Poirier what he needs to do. They okay. made me. The you're microphone arrogant, bro. made me. The microphone you're arrogant, made Corey. Me. You're very arrogant. Um, All right, guys. Uh, he is just under the buzzer, Josh Parisian. Our last fighter set to weigh in here at UFC 299 here in Miami. Yeah, Josh Parisian, actually, I think he looks a little trimmer than usual. He's posting a lot of intense strength and conditioning uh, spots on his Instagram. And he had a really funny one where two of his female teammates were... Uh, 266. One was, one was on the other shoulders the to Josh emulate Parisian. how tall his, his opponent is. Dis, dis, I, I can't say his last I name. honestly Dispain. miss... I, Dispain. Dispain. I, I, Dispain. I, 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 I was watching him. I, I literally don't know what you were saying. 
It's crazy. What were you saying to me? I'm so sorry. <laughs> Would it help if I did this? No. Would you listen then? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on, Dan. That's a bit of a loaded question. What I is was wrong saying. with you? No, I'm saying she said it. I didn't say it. Oh. See, I'm, I'm not the one saying it, bro. I'm sorry I brought that up, but I just couldn't help myself. I didn't know. They do, because you know, like they like it. when you're doing a when a, when a like a local TV person is doing a stand up and they're reporting, yeah. or they don't. Sometimes they have this lavalier mic on, yeah. and you don't know what to do with your hands. So yeah. they're, they're, they're so often you'll stand like they like yeah. do not do that on but TV. But who decided that was the symbol of the vagina? It is. Look it up. But the, who yeah, decided it's that? the international symbol. Some guy. I swear to God, it was a guy. Doesn't Andrew Tate do that a lot with his hands? I don't know who Andrew Tate is. What? Well, it's not. It's it's not socially acceptable. Whatever. Anyway. All right. Um, you guys know far oh, better yeah. than I do that there's nothing sweeter than a finish that's like set up perfectly, yeah. right? So everybody has a has a story of a of a finish or somebody you you know in detail that you've appreciated, um, and you're gonna break it down for us. Let's start with you, Senko. All right. Don't roll the tape yet because I gotta set this up. Jack de la Madalena has some of the most beautiful boxing that you will ever see. There's so much to talk about, whether it's how he goes to the body, whether it's the footwork, whether it's the range management, whether it's the timing. But I want to point out something specifically, and that is his pull too. That is his pull back left hand. It is a thing of beauty. Roll the tape. Oh, nice. So on the regional scene, because I did my homework for Contender Series, watch here. He's going to faint super hard. Now, faint. Stop the tape. Stop. Stop. Oh, go back. If they can go back, whatever. He fainted super hard. Look at how. Look at what he forced his opponent to. He forced his opponent to rhythm step, which is a reset. And we know, if we all listen to Coach Barry Robinson, we all know that after someone rhythm steps, they're gonna re-engage. They're gonna re-engage without a good plan. The rhythm step is when you bring your feet together. Especially, you cannot do that while you're still in boxing range. He forced the rhythm step of his opponent here. And he knew exactly that this guy was going to immediately re-engage without a plan. And watch what he does here. Pulls off at an angle. Steps back. Bap, bap. Two, three. Thing. Uh, of, uh, and that guy smelled his uh, own knee. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. It's really cool because they show it up here. Like, look at the oh. angle that he finds there. Absolutely gorgeous. And then here against Pete Rodriguez, he's going to see the same thing. He's pinging Pete, ja eating him up with the jab. Pete gets so frustrated, he's like, I gotta find a way to close distance. Whiffs on the hook immediately. Jack, step back left hand. His ability to make those reads in the pocket, force guys to get themselves out of position, find his angle, land his power. I mean, chef's kiss. I mean, it's a mwah, thing of beauty. Okay, so um, here's my story to finish. So I used to do this show, it's called Detail. I'm very good at details. Let's get into Kevin Holland fighting Fluffy Hernandez. Now, we all know Kevin Holland is a very long guy. He's, he fights at range very well, but he also is really good when you get in close. So when he's fighting Hernandez, a guy that is traditionally very aggressive to close the distance, Kevin encourages closing the distance. Watch, let's start here. So the fight starts, right? Pause it after the kick. Holland lands a leg kick, then he gets back to space. He always makes you fight him at the range at which he's comfortable. So as he gets back to space, it tells Hernandez, man, I've got to start to get close to this guy. So Holland continues to use those long range weapons. Let it roll for a second again. Kevin will throw a jab to the body and he throws a push kick right up the middle. Guys, let it roll. Boom, back to space. Kick to the body, pause back to space. He never engages you at your range on your terms. He tells you, okay, come on, come into me, come into me. And when you come into him, he can either take you down like we saw when he we fought um, against Kies after hurting him, or he can land these strikes. Watch here. Hernandez is taking these long range weapons to the point that he goes, okay, now I'm going to crash into him. So when he crashes, watch this, he goes, Forget this, I'm getting forward, pause. Kevin whiffs on the left hook, but note the hand goes right to grab the head. Hernandez is going to react to that. Holland knows now, his arms are long. He's not getting the short right hand in there. So watch how he turns the elbow over. Turn that over and then pause it. Bang, that hurts Hernandez. In most instances, when someone gets hurt, what do they do? They fall towards you. They want to grab you so that they can kind of knock the cobwebs off. Let Hernandez go. I will tell you when to pause again. Hernandez grabs Kevin. Go, guys, let it roll. And then pause. Bring it back a little bit if you can. More, 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 more. Here. 
Look at that. When Hernandez clinches, he tries to grab him and pull him close. Holland does a really good job with his left hand of pushing at the right elbow of Hernandez. So what does that do? It opens that window. Look at that window under Kevin Holland's left elbow. And he drives a nasty knee up the middle. So instead of head hunting now, he landed the beautiful right hand and then watched the knee that just ends him. Dude goes down. He's like, that's just too much. Holland jumps on him, gets the finish. But this was all set up by Kevin Holland and his long-range weapons. I'm going to poke at you. I'm going to jab at you. I'll kick you. But I will always make sure that I'm at the distance that I'm comfortable so that when you do engage, I can only engage with you on my terms. And that was the whole fight, by the way. So, Absolutely. So nice. I, I, well I have one. I have O'Malley versus Sterling, of course. One of the best knockouts that I've seen in a really long time. I think that there was a lot of Sterling kind of going into this one, wanting to be really exciting. It got him a little bit overextended, and it's what, you know, got him really hurt in that fight. So let's run it here. So O'Malley loses the first round. Sterling's pressing him. They switch to open stance, and we'll pause here just for a sec. It doesn't really matter. So he throws a teep. Nothing really happens. Sean's trying to keep space with throwing straight stuff down the middle. We have an open stance situation. A little bit ahead. Sterling's going to start to come in. We could play it a little bit here. Corey, let it run, Corey. I'm trying. I'm there talking about Corey the producer. Okay, and then right Cody. here. His name is Cody. Oh, his name is Cody. <laughs> oh. <laughs> right here, Sterling has the feeling of, <clears throat> oh, no, I have just made a really big mistake. Yeah. He's staring right down the barrel of a gun. Sean O'Malley already has the punch going. And I think what's the most beautiful piece about this is after he lands this punch, watch what happens with his feet. O'Malley throws real slow. Go ahead, play it. Boom. You see how he switched stance? Can we go back just a little bit here? So when you're trying to learn this punch from an open stance, right about here, and then let's go like a quarter of a second. Okay, so watch. His left foot is going to drift back. So Sterling being the grappler, he wants to obviously get a hold of O'Malley. O'Malley gets to launch a really committed punch and switch his stance at the same time, making it so that if Sterling gets through this or whatever, he doesn't get to land in any type of wrestling attack. O'Malley's ready right away, and that's why you can throw that so committed, and that's why you can throw that so awesome. We saw that last week with Umar Nurmagomedov. Mm -hmm. He got hurt, and because the guy was close, he grabbed his leg. But the way that he just switched, it made it impossible to grab the leg. That was that was. Corey's coming job, for your Corey. job. <laughs> cool. Dude, I watch yeah. those two a lot. Can, can I just tell you how <laughs> insightful all of that was? That was excellent. That was, I mean, all of you guys, that was really, I learned a lot from that segment. Um, speaking of Umar Nurmagomedov, uh, there's, there's been some rumors out there that that could be the, the next guy that you're facing. Of course, you're coming off that torn tricep. What's going on with your health? Who, who are you going to be fighting potentially coming up? What's uh, yeah, I mean, my health is good. My elbow's been good for a while now. It's getting a little cold in Colorado, so I'm having to deal with it being a little bit sore when it's cold, which is a little bit weird now after because this is my first surgery. Um, but the elbow's doing really good. Does that mean you're, you're, you're training in full right now, oh, like 100% yeah. go? Uh, yeah, I'm training in full. You know, I never really stopped training. I was kind of just doing left-handed stuff and kick stuff for a really long time. But I feel comfortable throwing it. I feel comfortable landing on it, so I'm all good. The rumors about Umar may or may not be true. I'm okay with that fight. I'm not afraid to take a fight down in the rankings by any means. If that means that I, it, as long as it pushes me closer to the dream of being a world champ, I'll take whatever fight that they tell me to fight. So can I translate that by meaning that if <laughs> you fight Umar, you would want to fight for the title next? Uh, that you'd kind of want some oh. kind of guarantee from yeah, the that, UFC? Yeah, yeah I, I think it's got to be. You know, I'm coming off of three wins, Song Yudong. Cheeto Vera, who's fighting for the belt right now, and may actually win. And then a tough fight against Rob Font, where I had an injury, you know, happen in that fight. If I beat Umar, the boogeyman, which, by the way, I'm the boogeyman of the division, not Umar. I want to keep that boogeyman status. And, uh, yeah, if that's what they tell me, then that's what they tell me, and that's yep. what I'll do. All right, we didn't ask you this so earlier, yeah, and I did see this on your YouTube page. By the way, Corey Sandhagen has a YouTube page. So when you get bored of DC's YouTube page, <laughs> go to Corey. He's building the following. It hasn't been around that long, but it's really good, it's actually. Good stuff. I Thanks. watched your breakdown on the fight, and the takeaway was that it's going to be closer than most people think 
Give us, give us kind of the pick and how you think this one's going to go down. Yeah, I mean, they say styles make matchups, you know, and I think that this is a weird one stylistically. I think that both guys are used to winning in a way where they'll land a really clean shot on the guy, and that's typically how they win. Cheeto usually takes a little bit longer to do so. O'Malley doesn't take nearly as long to, to find that one shot. But I think that their puzzle pieces don't really fit. I think that what O'Malley needs to do in order to beat Cheeto which is, you know, be overstimulating, throw a lot of different looks at him, don't do the same thing too many times in a row because Cheeto is really good at making reads. I think that if O'Malley does that, which he typically doesn't do, he'll have success. But I think that if Cheeto can get a read, make it really simple for himself and land a clean shot, I think that, you know, he has a really good chance at knocking him out. I don't know if you've noticed, but... DC hasn't said anything for about five minutes, and he just got up and left. Like, Daniel Cormier just got up and left the show because he was so upset that Corey was bringing insight and professionalism to the weigh-in show. Uh, so, so U Umar would be a matchup that you would look forward to. Oh, yeah, if, ab ab to absolutely, absolutely. I mean, Sean's already talking about him. The UFC yeah. loves him, and, you know, the numbers are just – rankings or the, the the rankings are just numbers they don't they don't have as much pull on things as you know people might think so I'm okay with what like I said if it's Francis Ngannou if it's John Jones <laughs> if it's Curtis Blades if they tell me that that's the guy that I got to fight in order to fight to, for the world championship that's the fight that I'll take and, and you said this earlier and I thought it was a great line you want to show that Umar is not the boogeyman of the division you're still the boogeyman of the division <laughs> yeah I'm uh you know I think I'm a couple losses away from being the gatekeeper uh, from going from boogeyman to gatekeeper or boogeyman to world champion and I'm gonna do my best to become that boogeyman to world champion and uh and not be you know the division's gatekeeper you're a long way from being a gatekeeper <laughs> my friend uh that was very well said and very well done looking forward to seeing whatever is next for you he's not going anywhere just yet but we are going to take a in-depth look at the main event it is the bantamweight champion sugar sean o'malley against cheeto vera for the second time sean o'malley has certainly taken the mma world by storm and tonight the sugar show takes on what most people believe is his toughest test to date Cheeto Vera is the real threat in this division to anybody, including Sean O'Malley. I felt confident. He felt slow. I feel like I was piecing him up. He threw a kick, and his toe hit my perennial nerve, completely shut down. Something's wrong with O'Malley's leg. Yep, he's right leg. We'll hear about it in the corner if he gets there. Oh! oh! Huge elbow oh! from Cheeto, oh! and another one! Shot. That's wow. it! Wow. Marlon wow. Cheeto Vera stops the Sugar Show in round one. My f Oh, baby. I beat him. I knock him out. And I know he's been saying for the last three years that he didn't lose, but he was sleeping when I was elbowing him in the face, so I won the fight. Woo! That got super lucky. He knows it. That's just, it is what it is. Nine out of ten times. I smoked this dude. It'll all be four years by the time we rumble again, and I've improved a lot. Continues to up the ante every time he steps in there. The way that he mixes up his attacks is second to none. His angles, his precision. He is a sniper. I've dedicated my life to this sport. I know you guys see the hair, the beautiful pink Lamborghini, the houses, and all the fun stuff. But I'm grinding. I'm in the gym every single day so I can come out here and win. Oh! O'Malley trying to close it out here. That will do it. The Sugar Show oh! on top of the world. And new Bantamweight champ, Sean O'Malley. Wow. I want to be considered one of the greatest of all time. And that's how I do that is by staying dialed and continue knocking people out. Sean O'Malley, welcome to superstardom. The dreams I have, they don't matter if I don't get this. I want to be a world champion more than anything else in life. Oh! He's out! Cheeto ends it! Oh my god! I just believe I'm better in every aspect. I'll be surprised if I get hit, to be honest. Oh! oh! The walk-off KO! The Sugar Show! 
the guy that have a lot of hype, good for him, but he don't have the dog I have inside. Chino comes to hurt you. He's an animal. He won't keep up on the hard side. I'm gonna make him beg me to stop. The man is a finishing machine. This is the most personal fight. I definitely want to hurt Cheeto. He's never been more lethal, never been more accurate. That man wants revenge. I'm gonna break him. He's gonna quit. You will see. I will find his chin and bounce my hands off his face until he falls. UFC 299, I'm putting this dude's lights out on to the next. Guess what, guys? You're never going to miss a moment with your favorite UFC host. All you have to do is head over to UFC in studio on X, on Instagram, on TikTok, with the best highlights from all the UFC live shows, and you can join the discussion. It's UFC in studio. Go give us a follow on Instagram, X, and TikTok right now. All right, we are inside the Octagon. Corey Sanhagen, Laura Sanko. The double champ, Daniel Cormier, Dan Helly here with you, playing a little game called Sharks and Minnows. You guys remember that game from yeah, yeah, when yeah. you were a kid? Oh, yeah. F for those of you out there who don't, here's a little look at how, uh, how it's going to go down, okay? Let's show you the video of Sharks and Minnows. All right, so you just have you have one guy who's the shark, and he's chasing everybody. He's diving all over the place. Oh, he's, this is like the wrestling game. Yeah. The yeah, he, if he touches you, then you're out. Mm -hmm. So we have a shark. It's R.J. Clifford. <laughs> He's here with us. He has uh, short arms, deep pockets. That's what they say about him. He needs to do it on his knees. Yeah. On That's his knees? He's got to be on his knees. I'm going to give you guys an opportunity. The video showed him on the knees. I'm going to okay. go blindfolded yeah, on the my blindfold feet. Yeah, pull the blindfold down. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Blindfold okay. to change it up. All right. Hey, give you guys a fighting chance. We'll pull your blindfold down. It's still up. All right. Okay, he says right. he's blindfolded. I don't know if I believe that. It's like a sleep mask from Delta. <laughs> Put him in the middle of the octagon where he has to come and try to find us. He's going right there. Okay. Yeah, right there. That's middle. Right on the monster logo. Wait, yeah. is it Marco Polo we're playing or Sharks no, and Minnows? Says. Sharks and Minnows. So we don't They're have to make there. any sound. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of the same thing. If but get... we should probably give him prompts, right? Yeah. Say stuff every yeah. Other. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's spread out. Let's move around. You tell me when. Stay right here. You can start chomping. Spin you. Miles is going to spin him. Radio guy, Miles. Go. All right, RJ, go. <laughs> I got That's somebody. Camera guy. guy. <laughs> camera guys count. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Sharks and minnows. RJ doesn't know where he's going. Oh, oh, oh. Almost, almost. He touched Dan. I no, he, he did. touched Dan. He did I not touch touched Dan. Dan. Right, left RJ, left RJ, left RJ. Hard, hard, right, right. He touched the Hellcat. Oh, he did not. He, right, right, right. He touched the Hellcat. Is this the 25 straight, to go? Straight, hard, straight, hard. Go, go, fast, fast. Oh. I'm just going to hide my <laughs> Sometimes you gotta sacrifice someone, and that sacrifice might be go to Laura Sanko. <laughs> Behind you, RJ. No, right. <laughs> there you go. Oh, he's on the ground. I think his thing doesn't. His suit deflated. RJ over here. RJ over here. His suit deflated. Pick up your pack. <laughs> oh, RJ, you might have to take the blindfold off. Now oh, you're oh, you're fucked. Okay. Now. Oh, there, blindfolds off. Oh, 
I was so, I'm so thin. I thought I could hide. I'm so thin. I'm so thin. She's out. <laughs> you got me. You got me. I was like so, I'm so thin. Corey's out. I thought that I'd be able to hide. So RJ, RJ, don't let Laura win. Ah. Oh. Oh, she she wins international women's bro. day. Ow. <laughs> yeah, as international per yeah, yeah. Day. usual. How about as per usual? I have a breath coming in. Advanced Can we boat. sit quick, guys? Is this a dynasty? <laughs> oh, no. stop! <laughs> stop! Am I a dynasty? Stop! Do not! Do not! <laughs> Don't do that! It's a way in show dynasty. Let's go over the shark. Oh. It hasn't been. Let's go. Yeah, now you're in so my so world. Very oh, no. big world. Let's go over to Mackenzie. You a little more on four. She's gonna eat with us. Oh, this isn't fun at all. Oh, oh, call HR. Get the hips forward if you want to get away from DC. Well, earlier this week, when we landed in Miami, all anyone could talk about was Joe's Stone Crab in Miami Beach. So, of course, you know me. I had to go check it out for myself. The place has been open for more than 100 years and for good reason, as we found out earlier this week. Well, guys, if you spend time here in Miami Beach, you'll hear from a lot of people that Joe's Stone Crab is the place to go eat. But I don't even know what a stone crab is, so we're going to go find out. Well, it's such a pleasure to be here at Joe's Stone Crab in Miami Beach, joined by fourth generation owner Stephen Saywitz. We're going to get into this stone crab and, and how you eat it. I know that that's really the key here, what makes this unique. Um, but first, I just wanted to ask about the history of the stone crab and, and how it was your great grandfather who discovered really that it was edible. Okay, so he was with his wife. He was a, like a, a cook, a chef, and so was his wife. They worked in the kitchen at their restaurant called Joe's Seafood Restaurant up until like the late 20s. Somebody, a Harvard ichthyologist, marine biologist, was uh, identifying and classifying some of the seafood and things that he found just a block and a half away over in Biscayne Bay. So he saw these crabs and brought them over, and little by slowly, he developed a recipe. The best thing that he found is just you throw them in boiling water, and then after about eight minutes or so, then you chill them really fast. However, we discovered later on, family discovered later on, that the crabs regenerate their claws. So there was no need to take, there was no need to take the, the kill the crab. So now they twist the claws off and throw the body back into the water wow. and where they regenerate a claw. So these claws could have come from a crab that had its claws pulled before. I think one of the most important things about the stone crab is the mustard sauce, and that's a recipe too, a secret recipe, not secret, but at the time it was secret. My great-grandfather came up with the Joe's mustard sauce, which is a great accompaniment, not just for the stone crab, but for almost any protein. Well, you've teed it up perfectly. I can't wait to try it. Should we dig in? Oh, sure. I'm gonna follow your lead though, because I see they're, they're pre-cracked. Should I do it in slow motion? <laughs> yeah. This is the easy part. You just kind of peel it. See how it just kind of peels? Just like, now listen to the sound. Love it. So in the dining room, you hear this sound, or you want to hear this sound a lot. And what you do is you peel off the shell. You don't even want that little piece there. You want that off too, because you don't want to bite down on that. This is going to be for you, OK? Oh, you're so kind. Now you yeah. take the tip. Now you bite down and pull. Bite down and pull. On the meat part, and you'll feel the membrane. Mm -hmm. Pull that. Oh my goodness. It's so fresh and the mustard. I could put that on everything. See? I really could. No better way to finish off a meal than with this key lime pie. I know you mentioned it's your mom's recipe. It is. She's done a lot of great things for Joe, so I'm very excited to try this, shall we? Yeah. Okay, we have to do a little ceremonial cheers. We didn't get to cheers our, uh, our crab, so. So good. That's it. All right, well, Steve, now you're open for business. I think it's time for us to go. I know that everyone is going to love this, especially DC with this key lime pie. All right, guys, we gotta try it. 
Oh, Corey, you need some help uh, tying your bib. Here, I'll hold yeah. your mic. I'll hold your mic. Uh, obviously, you don't eat enough crab. audio is going crazy right now. Yeah, Corey, welcome to the weigh-in show. <laughs> so, nice this isn't well, going to protect me from anything. Sure it is. You like crab corn? Yes. Today. Here you go, I Mackenzie. Let me, right, let me ask you a question before we try this, um, because I first had Joe Stone crab, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago when I lived down here. And it's this is the spot in really Miami. Is. In the restaurant business, it's tough to stay alive for 20 years, let alone, how, how many, 111 years? 111. I, I, wow. That's incredible. Yeah. I'm, I'm ready to be wild because generally a restaurant that's old is not very good. Well, what? no, <laughs> this one, it, like not only what, was what the quality, <laughs> the quality was incredible, but the really nice thing is when I go out for seafood, the last thing I want to do is the work of yeah. getting mm -hmm. the stuff mm -hmm. out. They, it's pre cracked They've done the work for it's you. So you just got to peel it away. So actually, why don't you take one up, Dan? Okay. Start yeah. peeling the uh, the shell away. Yeah. And the other thing that I really appreciated, bit of an elevated dining experience. Dan, I think you could cool. agree with that. Yeah, it's so nice. So I have one other question for you, and yes. I didn't know this until... Uh, do a little research on your segment, but they only, when they get these crabs and they catch them, they only take the claws. They don't take the whole crab. This isn't like Maryland blue crabs, right? Where you take the whole yeah. crab and you devour it. It's just the claws. Why is that? Correct. So the claws actually oh, regenerate, which oh, is wow. Wow. wild. Absolutely wild. So what they do is they lift the crabs. They take one or two of the claws, no more than two, if I'm not I'm mistaken. Sorry. And then they put them back and the claws regenerate. And they're left in the ocean. Disturbing. Hmm. Yeah, so you could be eating a uh, oh second, God. third a regeneration, but damn. There's the membrane. What are we thinking? I mean, it's money. Did you say membrane? That's the membrane. So <laughs> right are, veg the are vegetarians <laughs> allowed to eat this then? No. Are you I don't a vegetarian, so. Gord? No, no, I'm not. A, I'm not Pes vegetarian. A pescatarian. No, but but it, if it doesn't kill an animal. That's a good yeah, point. it's true. That's I don't know. It I could think be there a might loophole. be it could be a, loophole. a little bit of a put loophole there. Put some of that white stuff on there, Corey. You got some of that white stuff. Yeah, you got to try the sauce, the mustard sauce. It. It's mustard sauce cool. makes it. It's really DC. Good. I'm allergic to shellfish, but I, you know, where's mine? Like, could I have a piece hey, of steak or hey. something? You can have one of the limes. Actually, <laughs> no, speaking of limes, what? Oh, I God. actually did get you something special. We have some key lime oh, pie. Oh, did you really? A DC <laughs> serving, three slices right there for you. <laughs> you don't even need a fork, big DC. boy. <laughs> Even, stuff for me, dude. There was a spoon, Ooh. but um. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Look at his face. Look at your face. <laughs> Crabs <laughs> hanging on. Gotcha. Yo. By thread. San Hagen. Pretty good, right? You have got to try this key lime pie. Making oh my up, goodness. But... Now oh, that's so fourth generation owner Stephen Saywitz, his mom's oh recipe of the key lime pie. Is there a spoon for San Hagen? We can uh he can use I that little fork. I you guys like key lime pie? I Here, I got this one. Like, it's Lauren, it is amazing. my favorite dessert. Come here, ever. you gotta try this. It is amazing. I think we hey, might guys, have can some. Can I have more. another spoon? Are you gonna feed me? I haven't eaten I haven't eaten off of this, Laura. I've bit <laughs> Am I gonna am I literally gonna kneal before you have you feed me? Oh boy. There you go. Taste this key lime pie. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. How good is that? Incredible. Oh, give her one more piece. <laughs> that is amazing. You want some? No, give her one more piece and then pass it along. More? We got another spoon. <laughs> That's a beef. That can stay the Laura spoon. We do have another here. one. You like key lime pie, Corey? Yes. Welcome to the land show. <laughs> so we come back. Dang. Why this key lime pie good? is crazy, dude. Unreal. The, the stone crab and the key lime pie for me were almost a dead tie. Because, oh. yeah. No, I'm going You gotta try a bite. Yeah, key lime. Key lime I'm sorry. The, but the crab the is so fresh. The crab is good, but the it key is, lime pie is next DC, level. DC, you haven't had the crab. Put it right here. Put it right oh, you want a little more, Corey? Yeah. Mm. I need yeah. another spoon. This is mine right here, Corey. Don't touch well, yeah. I'm gonna this leave you guys Corey, don't to touch eat my to your either. heart's oh. content. But if you're ever in Miami Beach, make sure you go check out Joe's Stone Crab. It's been around for more than 111 years and for good reason. Hey, how in the world? For good reason. How are you 100% on restaurants? You're 100%. I'm Sean O'Malley. Yeah, I'm still undefeated. <laughs> you're still um, undefeated. Oh, you know, I, I, Yelp. So you really, so you really failed on one, then, is what you're trying to say. <laughs> well, we won't talk about that. We won't talk about that. <laughs> yeah. But really, it comes down to Chris Taylor, our features producer. Okay. He actually does all the legwork. Well, well you, you, so. aren't, you actually aren't 100%. Because you're not going to talk about it. Yeah, that's what I mean. Undefeated. Well, you guys enjoy the rest of your show. Make sure you tune in to UFC 299. Thank you, Mackenzie. Thank well, this you. is such a treat. You guys, I mean, this, this is the spot in Miami. Re the, but this this crab is really good. It's incredible. I kind of want to yeah. come back over there. That's key so lime pie. Good. This is crazy. I, is so I want to bite too, but you I don't. You got to try some. We need a couple. We need a couple spoons. They they, they didn't okay. bring spoons. While we're getting the spoons. 
I want to talk about this main event yep, for a yep, little yep. bit. Corey, and I want to start with you on this one. Sean O'Malley essentially called his shot in this one. You know, said once he won, he wanted the rematch against Cheeto. A, let's just start with this. Do you think that was the right call for him as the champion to, to fight Cheeto? Obviously, you're not available, right? So yeah. let's take you out of the mix. Um, I, think, I think so. Yeah, you know, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt, I suppose, just from like a uh, logistical standpoint. I think that O'Malley kind of does need to get that, you know, unclear one off of his record in order to like have a legacy or whatever it is that he's doing. But I think as a fight fan, I don't know that it does a ton. Like you beat Cheeto, who there, you know, was coming off of a loss against me. There's me. There's Marab, who have better arguments than Cheeto does. Right. So I, 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 I understand it. But um, you know, I, if he wins, is that? the best thing in the world or the biggest win that he could have right now in the division, I don't really think that it is. I agree with you that it's not the biggest win he could have. I do, how at, at the same time, I, though, I do think it's the right fight for this moment, but I am dying to see him fight you. Yeah, me too. That I fight, I mean, breaking down that fight would be an absolute joy because honestly, when you look at how you fought Cheeto, that's a lot of what, you know, you guys, you guys fight differently. You don't have the exact same style, but there are a lot of similarities in the volume and the movement. And I know I'm not hosting this show, but um, <laughs> how do you compare your style I don't, to Sean's? I don't mean to be that guy. Be that guy. I don't right. mean to be that guy. But while there are guys in the division that deserve to fight for a championship. I feel and agree with this being the fight right now. I just said that. No, I know. I'm just saying, though, because while we would all love to see him fight uh, Sean, we would love to see Sean fight all these other guys. I believe that this one, because of the history, because I believe that for as much as importance a fight has in terms of the matchup, there has to be a story, and it's about timing. This one has the timing yeah. with the history to be the right fight. Cheeto Vera having that win over Pedro Munoz, regardless of what you think about it, was enough to warrant that championship fight. And time and opportunity is why he's here. Fought the same night as Sean O'Malley. Has beaten Sean O'Malley. And you can make a case that Cheeto Vera won that fight and he hadn't even gotten started yet. He was only going to get better as the fight went longer. So I agree, Corey. But as an active, he's an active fighter still, so you're always kind of thinking deserving. Deserving is on many different levels opposed to just wins sure. and losses, especially as you step outside of it, as I have. Yep, absolutely. Go ahead, All right, guys, guess what we have here? Hold on. I gotta what is that? Know, it sounds like we're outside for some reason. It's the paper. It's the paper. It's take I had to take my... I was still eating. <laughs> uh, Steve and Cade Group are our... Elite VIP guest for the uh, oh, wow. VIP UFC 299 experience. How you doing, guys? Doing great. We're ready to go. You, did I hear correctly that you guys are walking out with Sean O'Malley tomorrow? My two sons that are flying in this morning, uh, Marcus and Max Group, they'll be walking out with Sean. Oh, my gosh. That would uh, be crazy. Uh, uh, three boys? How many kids? I've got a total of nine kids with my wife, with my wife Kelly. Yeah, that's my boy what? right there. My boy, that, that's my boy right there, right? That's the real champ. So, so how many are going to be here? We have a total of twelve coming to the to the fight, okay. but not. Uh, we have three kids that won't be here. Or how, how how pissed are they that they're not going to be here? <laughs> they drew the short stick. They drew the short stick. <laughs> they're a little younger, so they'll be okay. Oh man, so. You guys are you guys are big O'Malley fans. What what is it about uh, the Sugar Show that you like so much? Uh, I think he's just a unique personality in and outside of the octagon. He's fun to watch. And he's always putting on a show. So anybody on the card you could have chosen to walk out with? Why why O'Malley? Why because he's the champ? Because he's the main event? Would be my, my oh first yeah guess. Ab absolutely yeah yeah he's the champ. Uh, he's one of my favorite fighters at the moment. So yeah. Okay, give me how about a prediction. I'm going to say Sean O'Malley, but how, I'm not too sure, because I'm a big fan of Cheeto, too, so it's it's a tough call. There. Hey, you boys are a little, you, you're a little nervous. You're a little nervous <laughs> for the walkout. Yeah, you're a little nervous, aren't you? You're a little nervous right He's now. Right you'll be now. nervous for yeah, the Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> All right, let me tell you this. Don't trip. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm not walking <laughs> Don't them, trip, bro, when you tell, when, tell your brother, don't trip. And then he <laughs> will trip, and then we'll all have a great memory to make fun of him for the rest <laughs> of his life. 
You guys are doing good, though. Thanks. Appreciate Very it. Yeah. So give me the give me the backstory, right? How long have you been UFC fans? Where are you guys from? How did you get involved in this? Let me know. First fight we went to was Ronda Rousey and Nunez. Okay. Ooh. And that was back. It was in Vegas, and we were hooked. And now we get a lot of the VIP uh, tickets through on site, and we're grateful Dana allows that to happen because we get up close and personal with, with the fighters and, and with the venue. But we're huge, huge UFC fans. That's so awesome. And not to mention, we're, we, we're franchisees of Buffalo Wild Wings, so the sport bars. So we show the fights in, in all of our stores, which is really cool. Oh, love it. Where are yeah. your Buffalo Wild Wings? We're, we're East Coast, West Coast. We're all the way from the Carolinas. We got Ohio all the way out to California. And yeah. Hey, you know, we. Uh, we you, you, you paid for the tickets, not to plug your story. I don't <laughs> plug it. I don't I'm the only one that can do that. I'm the only one that's over here doing YouTube plugs. You come over here. You're not my type of guy. You, you my type of guy. He's a hustler, this guy. And I didn't wear the B-dubs here, though. I wore You thought about it. Yeah, this guy, this guy right here is a hustler. You saw what he did? He's not so much. He knows what, he, he knows what he's doing. We're with uh, Stephen Cade Groob. Um, I know you guys are walking out with uh, with Sean O'Malley, but what, what are, what's another fight on the card or fighter that you're most looking forward to uh, to seeing on Saturday night? The Paige Holland fight is very right? intriguing. Ooh. I mean, that, it's and I agree with DC. I think Holland may take him to the ground, but their their fighting styles are very similar. They're just uncanny. That's going to be interesting, and and I actually think Dustin's going to get it done. I think you know that's going to be a slugfest. I think that's what Dustin likes. Yeah. And Dustin's a good striker, and he's got heavy hands. So I'm going Dustin on that one. Nice. Yeah, I kind of like that too. What do you think? I'm gonna have to agree with him. I'm I'm excited to watch Dustin fight. Uh, I think he's gonna pull it out uh, tomorrow night as well. So. All right, Cade and Steve Groob. Uh, if you guys want to take pictures with these guys, you're more than welcome to do that with Corey and DC, and I'm sure you want one with Sanko, but I'll continue. I'll keep the show on track, guys. Okay, I'll keep the you. show on track. Thank you. Uh, you guys are part of the UFC 299, 299 VIP experience, living proof that uh, yeah. it is alive and well, and go to your local Buffalo Wild Wings. I want to open a store in that beach. Thanks, I love this guy. I got you. Oh my goodness, <laughs> and if that, that was, hey, I'm trying to get my own franchise. What about my YouTube channel? <laughs> uh, fuck your YouTube <laughs> channel. Come on, man. All right, we do have work to do here. Pictures. Absolutely. Hey guys, thanks so much. Have a great time thank tomorrow night. Thanks. Come on, say it. Get over here tomorrow awesome night. you guys did this, thanks. You Laura, you want to come down I'm here? I'm coming down, yeah. Hey, man. Let's go. Right. Nice to meet you. Come take this photo. I hope awesome. you get down. Let's go. Let's pop okay, down right we here. have yep. some. Uh, we have some breaking news. While the groups take some pictures, we have new coaches for the new season of the Ultimate Fighter. It's going to be Alexa Grasso and Valentina Shevchenko are the two uh, new coaches, which is awesome. And one of them, Alexa Grasso, is set to uh, to join us now. Alexa, how you doing? Hey. Thanks for coming on. I'm the show. grading you. Yeah, nice to meet you. Uh, we, we have a little bit of a delay here, so I'll try to pause and let you answer the question. This is Dan Helley. We have uh, DC Corey Sandhagen and Laura Sanko joining us as well. But let me just ask you what your initial reaction was when they approached you about being the coach of the new season of The Ultimate Fighter with Valentina. It was amazing. Uh, this is a dream come true, and I'm. Uh, extremely excited for this big opportunity. So I believe you and Valentina both have been dealing with some uh, some hand injuries as of late. It, if the show goes on uh, when it debuts in June, it kind of puts you guys um, on track to potentially fight at the Sphere. Could that be a possibility? I hope so. And that would be the uh, that would obviously be a, be a trilogy between you two. Is that uh, is that one of the like health wise you're going to be ready? I mean, we're making history. You know, she has a long, long story behind her. She's a, an amazing athlete, um, and for me, you know, a girl from Mexico, trained, born, raised, and everything in Mexico, achieving everything I'm doing, it's it's huge for me, and I'm extremely happy for the UFC giving us this. Uh, big, big opportunity. I, it doesn't really get any bigger than that, right? We've been hearing Dana White talk about how big this Mexican Independence Day show uh, will be at the Sphere. He said it's going to be the best live sporting event.
basically in the history of the world and for you two to be a part of that. Uh, what, what does that mean to you as the first Mexican female champion? I mean, it's huge. As, as you can see, Mexicans, we, we have a lot of heart. We are tough. We are there to fight every second of that fight. So I think that that's something people love about our fighting style. So it's huge, you know. We've been working so, so hard to put our flag on the top, and we are now having big results. We know about Alexa Grasso as the flyweight champion. We know what you're like as a fighter, right? What are you going to be like as a coach on tough? I'm an extreme coach. I love discipline, and I'll do my best for my team to win. I'll, I'll, can I ask Alexa a question? Oh, DC, if you don't sure. Mind. Sure, I don't mind. <laughs> Please. Yeah, Hi, Alexa. Over. It's DC. Hey. Hello, my friend. She's one of my favorite fighters and also my friend. So, Dan Haley, you can take that. Alexa Grosso, <laughs> how excited are you to fight in the trilogy? And how much have you learned in those first two fights with Valentina Shevchenko? Because the first fight, people didn't expect you to get the job done. The second fight was a draw on Mexican Independence Day card, which was my favorite fight card of the entire year, by the way. But how much can you apply those two lessons to the third fight to try to put an end to this Valentina Shevchenko chapter? Well, I mean, I've learned a lot, you know, fighting someone with really high IQ technique. Um, she has a long, long story inside the Octagon. I mean, I'm learning a lot. I'm improving so much. I'm training so, so hard every single day. I watch my fight every single day. So right now I know um, the perfect formula to have an amazing performance is to finish the fight again. How, how can you feel a difference in your confidence as the champion opposed to being the challenger, especially if you do get to fight on that historic fight night card? I know it's not a, a definite thing, but how much confidence do you carry now as the champion opposed to when you were challenging Valentina? And I want to ask you this also. What was the reception when you went to the fight card in Mexico City? How cool is that as the champion? Well, it's different, you know, there's a lot of risk now more. There's, there's a lot more I can lose right now, <laughs> which is not cool. But <laughs> it's nice because um, when I was there in Mexico City, I, I, I received the love from the people, from my country. Um, I, I don't know, it just really pulled my, my heart that I'm achieving a lot of things and I'm being a big, big motivation for the next generations and for all the Mexicans and Latin people who fight. Let, let me ask you, Alexa, it seemed like the last time that you and Valentina fought to a draw, she was a little dismissive, not really agreeing with it. What, what was your reaction to how she reacted to the result? Well, it was like the first time, you know, um, I'm, and I kind of understand what she's feeling because it's hard, like, you know, for a long, long time you're not losing and there's someone who's achieving at your level and is doing something that no one ever did before, you know, with knockdown, uh, submission, um, that's going to, you know, pushing and punching your your face. It's it's hard, but I know I did an amazing job and I give you my, my word that I've, I've been working every single day super hard to be uh, the best athlete I can be. What do you think you're going to learn from being around Valentina for six weeks in that type of environment? It's going to be cool. You know, I'm excited. I'm excited. I know that we've been having, um, it's weird also. <laughs> Inside of the Octagon, we are there to give a war. But I mean, outside, we are two women fighting for our dreams, doing everything in our hands to make um, the best fights ever and to represent our countries. So, I mean, it's, it's just inspiring and exciting and, and huge for me. A lot of <clears throat> interesting fights in the flyweight division. Excuse me, Macy Barber, Caitlin Sermonara on this card. Any thoughts on that fight coming up on Saturday night? It's an amazing fight. You know, I'm, I, I fought Macy. I've seen Chikagan too, and I think it's an interesting fight. You know, we have Chikagan with experience, with the long distance, and we have Macy with the power and, and the will. So it's going to be a great fight. All right, Alexa, thank you so much. The uh, one half 
of the coaching duo for the new season of The Ultimate Fighter set to debut in June, Alexa Grasso, and uh, potentially that trilogy coming up with Valentina Shevchenko. Certainly looking forward to that. Thank you, Alexa. Alexa. Thank you, guys. You know, the crazy thing, when, uh, when DC wasn't interrupting and asking a question, he was stuffing his face with pie. Did you I see would that? If, if Bro, it was you've, eaten whole plate, you've eaten a whole plate of crab legs. <laughs> can I, can I raise a point? I, no one ever spun the wheel after I cleaned everyone's clock oh in the God. octagon, by Do the Corey. way. Oh, Corey deserves to spin the wheel. I mean, should we do that now? <laughs> my belt, listen. Oh, you got the belt. I'm, I'm like Sean Strickland with this belt at this point. I've you're, had it so much. It? Yeah, I'm just like, dude. put it in the closet, put it under some dirty I mean, clothes. you are the champion. Wow, you're so good. Dynasty. Yeah, it's a dynasty, Laura. It is a dynasty. And you should make him spin it's like It's been one from day one, and you know it. Yeah, it has. Make him spin the uh, cord. I am going to need the, the new guy to spin it, though. All right, here goes Corey. A little wheel spin. Yeah, not uh, hold on, hold on. That was oh. a bad spin. That was a bad spin. French, please? It? It's a little tight. I don't know. If, yeah. It is tight. It's All right, there they, we go. They, they, they got it. A little new thing. Acting uh, partner? Acting partner. Okay, so we saw Sean O'Malley and Cheeto Vera have kind of like a back and forth, and it was very weird and awkward. So you need to pick a partner, and one of you is going to be Sean, one of you is going to be Cheeto. And you're going to try to reenact. Oh, I can be. I can be. Little interaction. There you go. Volunteer. Okay. Okay. So I'm I'm Sean O'Malley. Are we walking past each other? Laura's Cheeto. Yeah. Okay. And we're just having like. I'm walking past. Oh, a shit talk. Oh, like on embedded. I'm like. Yeah. I'm like with my family. Okay. I'm. Yeah. (laughs) Oh god. (laughs) So you're Uh, Sean. Hey, you ready to get knocked out, loser? Suck my dick, bitch. <laughs> uh, uh, that was. Uh, oh, the Generation that was, X. That job. was weird. Wow, a little Generation X. Oh, good, good job. That was pretty spot on. Thank you. <laughs> All right, it's time for some mean tweets. I'm oh, sure you goodness. guys have seen this segment before, right? It's Ooh. where people tweet mean stuff about you, and then that actual person has to read these mean tweets. Who do we want to start with? Do we want to start with? Did we? Corey? I can start. Oh, oh, RJ. RJ's going to deliver the packet for all of us? Okay. Oh, right, this is DC's so good. First. All right, RJ's hey, bringing RJ. the packets up. Mean tweets. DC. Oh, God, these You're are going to be some good so ones. good. MK, um, hold on. So I've got a few of these tweets mm-hmm. here. Okay. Uh, are they in here? All right. All right, ready? Yeah. So I read the tweet. All right, MK Ultra Boost. Hashi Larry. Oh, sorry. This is the fat one first. Actually, it's always the fat one. The body issue. Oh, yes. Throw back to Daniel Cormier on the body issue. Guys, listen. I look worse than that. that- <laughs> I mean, if I looked that good, I'd be real Who fucking happy. Who is that, happy. actually? Who is that? I'd be really, really thinking like Warren Sapp or somebody. All right, let me see the next one. All right. Jess Wild said something to the... Oh, okay, okay, this guy. I cannot imagine a worse podcast than Daniel Cormier and Chael Sonnen talking every <laughs> single week. Okay, Ultra Boosh, Hassy Larry, you suck, and that's why you don't have a podcast, because if you were good and engaging, maybe ESPN would hire you. So this is the beauty of having this. John Jones living rent-free in my head. Guys, John Jones talks about me the majority of the time. It's not always me, but he does have... Okay, okay, maybe he doesn't live rent-free there, but he does pay rent for his condo that he has in my brain. I could never let it go. In the last one, Big Teats, uh, Daniel Cormier <laughs> fucking sucks. And Big Teats, that's very hurtful. And I will answer this with the most youthful, childish response I can come up with, and it is... Yo mama sucks. <laughs> there you go. Then your mama sucks? Well, your mama sucks. What can you even say to that? Yeah, that's the best response that I can come up with. All right, I got one, or I got a few. <laughs> <laughs> Corey, San- uh, Corey Sanhagen should leave the UFC at this point. <laughs> Why? That's not even a good one. No, that's not. No. not very come, good. come. They're like, you've accomplished time. so much, you just. Right. You, yeah. you're what, what more can you do? Yeah, all right. Sean O'Malley styles on Sandhagen. How would they know that? No way. Also. <laughs> also, no way. Dot, 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 also. Flash MMA UFC. Still not that insulting. Come on. Wow, Corey Sandhagen sucks. All he does is run. Shitty fighter. He does not deserve the belt. Thanks, little Mac. Uh, you had a torn tricep. 
I didn't run in that fight. <laughs> I have ran in some fights. <laughs> I didn't want to get hit by some of these it, guys. By the Absolutely. way, it's a legitimate strategy. It's a legitimate strategy. It's okay. People just don't understand fighting. It's okay. Ooh, this is a long one. <laughs> Book hero. Corey Sanhagen woke up feeling dangerous. Only finishes are on washed senior citizens. Is that true? Loses to every elite Loses to every elite fighter, fighter like Jan, Aljo, TJ. Eh, kind of. There's some truth to that one. <laughs> would, have, would have lost to Song Yudong if the doctor wasn't a beta. That's not true. Song's no. definitely, that one's not true. I was winning that fight. And... <laughs> That was a beautiful elbow. Just enjoy Beta it, elbow. You, you dork. <laughs> What's that even mean? <laughs> Most boring main event of 2023, also kind of not true. <laughs> or also kind of, there's some truth to that one, too. <laughs> you were hurt. Uh, yeah, you were hurt. Beta elbow. Beta I don't elbow? know what that means. Dude, our producers are absolutely loving this. Elbow I, I, th those weren't even that insulting. I want Twitter. Twitter Crank should come at me Crank it up. You want another one? harder than that. If he was a British... So, <laughs> Tory Sandhagen, if he was a British conservative grifter, Tory, Tory Sandbagger. Sandbagger. Oh, what's a British conservative grifter? It sounds like some shit that I don't want to be. <laughs> is that you don't want to be, be, be that? Hell, no, I'm I don't know what that, that, that is. Yeah. 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 All right, um, Sanko or me next? Who do we want? Oh, Sanko. Oh, I'm going. Okay. Um, oh, this is good. First up, <clears throat> MMA uncensored. <laughs> Laura, oh. Laura, well, I mean that's just. That's just how the old, honest How truth. old was that picture? Um, I think I'm 12. Okay. We I all thought you were, did I we mean, all have a face like that? No. I think it's the bangs that are maybe, <laughs> you know, Accentuates. the not great I part. sprayed, I mean, there's so much. I did have a goth stage as well. We we, we visited that one. That's not even that bad, guys. I don't, I, I don't think it's that bad. They're oh, trying to make fun of, of you. It's kind it's of a child compliment. abuse, right? It's like you're a kid. Make fun of a kid. Yeah, they're making fun of a child. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> next. Uh, it's, it's your mama, oh, oh, wow. <laughs> oh my God. It's your mama, booby. Please no, no, go no, away, no. You ins you're you insufferable as fuck. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh, wow. Laura. <laughs> you're insufferable, I mean. They're mean. I can be, honestly, I get it. All right, we've got Dyson Hunter at Cash One Phoenix. <clears throat> I would be totally fine, this is long, I would be totally fine with her commentary were it not for the fact that she continues to make sex noises every 30 seconds. <laughs> every time a fighter lands something, she says, oh, She doing this the whole time, dude. Hey, Ellie. Ellie, she doing this oh, the whole time. That's true. All the time. All I mean, the, the universal sign for vagina. Signs. Oh, this the is whole my favorite show. part. And it's starting to look deliberate for male viewers. Just that kind of girl. I did respond to that person, actually. And I, I said, you know, Given what he tweeted, because he's like, she screams, ah, ooh, ah, I feel like he probably jerks off to women's tennis. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, my God, Laura. Um, yeah, all right. I like it. Okay. I like oh. it. At Cryan Burr, Laura Stanko <laughs> is, and I hate to say it, unfortunately, the most annoying commentator they've ever had on the weigh-in show. Uh, I mean, DC would probably agree with you. There's maybe some truth well, to it as well. Yeah, I got some Here's the ones. thing, Laura. Suck I'm it, on, Brian. Laura, Suck it. I'm on <laughs> the way in dishes. show. <laughs> oh, I'm on the way in show, and I'm annoying. So you can't possibly be the most annoying human being. <laughs> my my life goal is to annoy people. I appreciate you having my back. All right, uh, I got a couple here. These, this is obvious. I could have told you before we did this segment what <laughs> this tweet was going to say. Yeah. Okay. Who the fuck is Dan Heller? I get it. I get it. I, I'm not a. I'm not a fighter. I'm not Laura Sanko. You're not a fighter. I'm relatively hey, well, Laura, new hey, to this world. Well, Laura is a fighter, but you're not a fighter. You're the only. You're just a guy that insults world champions as if you are a fighter. You know, after you, Luke Rockhold's here in Miami, by the way, which I want to bring you two together. Hey, by the way, um, I just sent a tweet to uh, Zach that I hope we can put up on the air. Um, I sat next to Luke like. A diagonal across the aisle from not. Luke Rockhold on a you fight, did not. and I covered my face the whole time. <laughs> he has no idea who I am, but I did not want to introduce myself. Well, See, nobody does. You saw the tweet. For you yeah. All right, one more tweet. Uh, I was yelling at the screen at how shit ch uh, Todd Grisham is. Turns out it was Dan <laughs> Helley's first gig as an analyst. Equally poor, and they sound the same. Listen, I have no bone to pick oh with Todd Grisham. God. But we don't fucking sound the same. Okay? <laughs> we don't look the same. Oh we don't sound the God. same. Yeah, they got you nice. with the boy Grish. 
Mm. Yeah. Todd Grisham is All something right. else, man. All right, that was pretty good. Hey, uh, Zach great. Candido. Uh, oh, my God. Our uh, senior executive vice president of broadcasting. Did you get the tweet that I sent you? Uh, you're not putting that one up. A little oh. too graphic. <laughs> have you heard what we've been saying on this show and you're not going to put that tweet up? Oh, uh, we have another tweet. Oh, I can't even read this. I can read it for you. Can you struggled not see all year it? long. Dan Helley, NFL announcer, week three. New Orleans at Carolina. Who wants to tell him both teams have only played two games all year long? <laughs> Helly. Oh, that, that does sound like a call in that game. <laughs> you said that. What was wrong about that? It was two games. There's two yeah. games. All year long? Yeah. Then they, two games and back then. then they had four preseason games. So you throw in the preseason and training camp. Oh, that's oh, like three oh, months oh, of football. Oh, that, that, one, that one hurt him. That it one did. hurt him. Look at him. Did you see the way he so acted? Triggered right now. Oh, Taz. my God. Taz. That one hurt him. Yeah. yeah Taz, look at how he for you. Oh. <laughs> oh, I have another one. Oh, he has more. Okay, okay, okay. Please. From Mr. Blue Lips. Dan Helley is an absolute idiot, though. <laughs> Dumber <laughs> than the dude that works with Luke Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, making fun of Brian Campbell? <laughs> right. By the I way, Luke, Tom Luke Thomas, <laughs> fellow DC guy. From the DMV, love Luke Thomas. Hey, bro, He's listen, great. Doug, you're, then you're, I, hey, guys. Read the, read the tweet. Read the tweet. Oh, okay. Wait, wait, stop, stop, stop. Okay, let him read his tweet. That's so graphic. All right, this is, this is my favorite tweet, <laughs> maybe ever, <laughs> ever. This was after, uh, this was after a weigh-in show uh, a couple of weigh-ins ago. DC and Laura Senko are an incredible team. One commentator has the biggest tits in MMA. The other is Laura Sanko. Oh! Oh! oh, really? Oh, really? Okay. Oh, yeah. Hey, guys, let, uh, uh, my fan, the DC Army, right? Let's cancel Dan Helley. Oh, what the in the hell? comments, fire Dan Helley. Because you are now getting compared to that guy that's with Luke Thomas, who I don't know. People are saying they don't know you. I don't know if I can be seen with you anymore. You know what? And now you want to say I have you, tits? You did this to me with the rock yes, thing. Yes, I did. And it got aggregated. Yes, it will. And TikToked and It's going to happen again. Trust me. I, it, God listen, damn it. my voice is very powerful. Yeah, I know. I know. And I'm your guy. Just because I won't play golf with you today. I mean, that, you know. is the, that is the repercussions of you canceling on golf. Cancel on your high school friend right now, or I swear to God, I'll stick the D.C. <laughs> Army on you. Call your friend right now. Cancel. You know why? You know why I won't? Fernando Jimenez from Ecuador, part of the Ecuadorian Army. Okay, maybe, maybe <laughs> the biggest fan of Cheeto Vera of all time. I'm not canceling. I'm a That's high the guy. Player. That's the guy that you're going to play with. Yeah, the Fernando. president of Ecuador. No, I you're said, playing. I said you're going to hang out with your high school Ecuador. friend, the president of Ecuador. I said he's maybe the biggest fan of Cheeto Vera. He's <laughs> from Ecuador. He's from Ecuador. All right, C.J. Vergara, we're hearing right now, did not make weight. Oh no. Weigh-ins are officially over. He didn't lose any weight. He didn't lose any weight. No. He did not, not a pound. Dang. Man. All right. So he didn't make weight. That's All right. not a good look. You guys ready for a little rapid fire? All right. Um, I don't think I'm going to have to explain rapid fire to Corey. He went to uh, <laughs> CU, University of Colorado, so he's fully uh, aware of how this works. I do need a fresh beer. I'm, you getting, like I'm getting light. Yeah. DC? Yeah. Coach Prime. Now that we're not yeah. chugging wine, yeah. I can actually handle my liquor oh, this a is bit Yeah. Better. You've been drinking a lot more of that than you normally do. I know. You. Yeah. All right. You guys ready for a little rapid fire? Beer. It's nice. I like Bud Light. It's fresh. I do too. Oh my God, you're a I, company man. I, <laughs> I, I, I love you Bud Light. If you're getting called the Bud company Light man by me, drink hey, oh, I, oh, man. Yeah, in the great. summer, in the winter, anytime, guys. <laughs> right. Bud Light is the best beer on the planet. It's gluten free. It is gluten free. It's, gru it's All right, gluten free. RJ, hit me up, Bud Light. Let's start with true or false. Thanks. There is some truth to Sean O'Malley saying Cheetos' win over him was a fluke. True or false? Some truth. So, there, there is some truth in that it's really hard to replicate landing on that nerve perfectly. It's not like you can go out there. I mean, you can target that area, but we all know there's thousands of leg kicks. Not all of them have that effect. So there's a grain of truth. But majority of me says it's a legit win. Yeah, I mean, it's true, but also, who who cares? Weird stuff happens in fights all the time that, exactly. like, you right. know. Like head kicks just, with 30 seconds left in yeah. a title fight. Like, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It happens. Yeah. Strange things happen all the time in fights, and too bad. I believe it, I believe it's true because you don't know what would have happened. They fought for, what, three minutes? Yeah. Right? It's not like we have a real idea who was going to win the fight. But, yes, he landed the kick, and that's why the fight was ended. But there is a little truth to it, a little bit. All right, mental edge. Who has it? O'Malley with revenge on his mind and the unwavering confidence because he said it was a fluke last time, or Cheeto because he actually won the last fight? Mental edge. I think Sean O'Malley has the mental edge of just being champion. Mm -hmm. 
I think Cheeto has a mental edge. I think Sean's been acting a little weird this week, like kind of talking trash to Cheeto. I thought he was a little weird in the presser. I think he's, uh, I don't know, I, I, I think Cheeto's kind of got the mental edge. I honestly, I, I, I can't tell. Because the reality is you can't take much from the first fight, and the only two that know are those two. Yeah. Because we nobody else knows what it felt like in the octagon that night. I can't really tell. And I, I talked to both of them individually. That coat exuded confidence. Yeah, yeah, that big green furry coat <laughs> certainly. Exudes, well, he always exudes confidence with that stuff. Okay, who's going to be the the crowd favorite? I think the presser could have answered this question a little bit. Man, I think in Miami you've got a Latino on the card. I, I think Cheeto is actually going to have the majority of the crowd. Is that between those two? I'm assuming. Yeah. 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 I agree. I think it's probably going to be Cheeto. I think. Uh, yeah, I mean, I fought down here. I fought a Brazilian down here, and I was getting a lot of booze yeah. down here. So, yeah, I, I'm thinking Cheeto. While I think Sean O'Malley will get more booze than he normally gets, I think it'll be positive pretty much for both. It'll be one of those rare instances where it won't be as obvious as we would expect, but I do expect Cheeto to get more cheers, just not by much. Over under for Dustin Poirier. Three and a half fights left in his career after this one. Over under. I'm going to go under. He has done everything he needs to do, and the man has had an incredible career. Yeah, I'm under. I think being 35 years old, accomplishing all that he's accomplished, making all the money that he's probably exactly. made, you know, I don't, I, don't, I don't see why more than three. I'm going to say under. I hate that I agree with you guys on so many of these, but he will only fight fights that excite him now. This will be the last time you'll see Dustin Poirier fighting a guy like a Benoit Saint-Denis. He's not going to be fighting back behind them and guys with not as much name value. So I don't know if there's that many fights left for him in the division because he's already fought most of them. All right. True or false? Oh, check that. Are you surprised Benoit Saint-Denis is the favorite over Poirier? A little bit. I mean, there are so many bugs. I know. There's, there's a couple There's a lot of bugs here. on the stage right now. A little bit. But, I mean, the odds makers tend to have a lot of recency bias, in my opinion. They love the age stat. Um, but, yeah, I was surprised. What was the question? Are you surprised <laughs> that Benoit Saint-Denis is the favorite in this oh, one? Oh, I, I am, actually. I, uh, why, why would you ever sleep on Poirier? You know? I yeah. think Poirier is one of the Agreed. absolute best. Yeah, I, I was a bit surprised. When I was told it yesterday, I was like, whoa. It, both of them, him mm-hmm. and Gilbert Burns. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. True or false, Kevin Holland needs to use his ground game to beat MVP. Has to or should? Has to I don't think he has to. I think Kevin Holland can do some crazy ass shit out there. Can you imagine how weird this fight could get if they both go fully into their characters? <laughs> Talking, dancing. So fun. I mean, it'll be it'll be great. Yeah, it will be great. Um, I don't think that he has to. I think it's going to be one of those where I think that their striking is going to be pretty evenly matched. So I don't think that they're going to have to. I think that they're both more comfortable standing. I don't I don't I don't see it. Yeah, he has to. He absolutely has to. Maybe it has to come off of striking. But he's got to mix it up because if you allow for a guy like this to be comfortable just standing without the threat of the grappling, you're going to be in trouble. It it really is MVP's best chance. All right, buy or sell MVP already in the welterweight title conversation with a win. Um, Title conversation? Okay, I think because Leon Edwards, I think he might be on the cusp of the conversation, but I think a lot of it has to do with the U.K., draw if it wasn't Leon Edwards I don't know that he would be there with a win I think he it depends how he wins I think if he goes out there and he knocks him out in some incredible way which MVP has in the past I think that potentially that's all you really need now it's not a Michael Chandler situation it's not one big win and you're in the conversation I think he's got work to do I mean Hell, below Muhammad. I don't even like to talk about anyone else potentially being in a title conversation because below Muhammad deserves to fight for this belt, and it should happen. So I'm going to say no. If MVP wins, it'd be fun to see him fight Ian Gary. Uh, that would be a good fight. All like right, fact or fiction, the Oceanic region, next champion will be Jack Maddalena. I'm trying to think who else. Basically, you're thinking down Izzy, there. Hooker, Volk, Whitaker, Kaikara France, um, Taitu Ivasa. That he'll win before fiction, any of those guys. I think Jack has, I think Jack can do it. I think he's got a little bit of time left to accomplish that. And I, I see Izzy or, or even Volk coming back and being able to get it done. Yeah, I think no offense to Jack, but I'm not 100% sold on the championship thing yet. I think that 
maybe he'll answer some questions tomorrow, but uh, I'm not 100% sold yet. No, fiction. It'll be Edesanya because Edesanya will continue to get opportunities. Mm -hmm. He's such a massive star that he'll get chances first. And I think that is ultimately why I believe if anyone wins the belt, it'll be him. He'll fight uh, Dracus before Volk gets another title fight, before Jack gets a title fight, so he'll have the most, the first chances, opportunity. Yeah. yeah. It's common sense there that you're spewing. It makes good work. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, All right, key adjustment that you want to see Piotr Jan make after three straight losses. I mean, I think for is this rapid fire or is this be yeah. better? <laughs> yeah, this rapid fire. I mean, I, I think particularly in this fight, he's got to he's got to bully the bully. He's got to put Song on the back foot. Yeah, I think Jan. I don't think that he needs to make too many adjustments. Dude, I think so that it's not like he's on some. He hasn't fallen off. Dude, he's no, I don't. And, and it's not guy. like he's performing horribly no. either. I think that people are giving him a really hard time. And uh, I mean, Song's a really tough test, but. I mean, so Jan is still an incredible fighter yeah. and, and is still going to continue to be that way. He's not mentally broken or anything like that. I, I don't think he needs to change anything. Those guys are just fighting well, and they beat him. That's just what happened. He fought three of the best guys in the world, and they beat him. But it's not like he looks slower. Mm -hmm. He's not fighting with a great game plan. He's still the same guy, and he's still as good as he was before. Yeah, I think a lot of people forget that. All right, true or false? This one's only for Corey because you're the only one who's experienced this. Song Yidong, the hardest power puncher. In the bantamweight division, true or false? True, I think. Yeah, I think I think he's the best athlete in the division, all around athlete. Best. Hmm. Yep. Best. He's fast. Wow. Oh man, right. the thing That's a the, huge the thing that he hurt me with, I didn't even see, bro. <laughs> That's never happened to me. The left hook. Yeah. 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 He's uh, he's fun to watch. All right, best grappler in the game, Curtis Blades, or Jailton Almeida. Mm. Who's the better grappler, Blades mm. or Almeida? I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say. This is a hard one. And by the way, it tells you how close it is. It's a it's a coin flip fight. The only pick them on the card, both like, minus one ten. I feel like Blades is, has better control. Almeida is so explosive with his takedowns, but I'm going to give Curtis a little edge. Yeah, I'm going with Blades. I think you know offensive wrestling. I think he's going to be better. I think if the other guy does decide to shoot, I think that Curtis is going to be able to stop it. I also, I, I, and I mean Curtis is definitely no slouch in the jiu-jitsu department either. So yeah, I got Curtis. I'm going to have to say Jailton Almeida. I mean, Curtis Blades is a phenomenal wrestler, and he's good on top. But he got taken down by Alistair Overeem and some of these other guys. And because of that, I think Jailton will get takedowns, and he's a better jiu-jitsu guy when the fight hits the ground. Macy Barber, with a win, how many fights away is she from a title shot? It can be at, it can be at 125 or 130. I was going to say, what division? Uh, I, I think, honestly, one away, especially if she goes up and fights at Bantamweight. The Bantamweight division is mm -hmm. in need of some excitement, a star, and Macy's on an absolute rip, and she's willing to do it, and she even talked about it this week. Very point blank. <laughs> I'm gonna copy. I'm gonna copy Laura's answer because I'm not as well versed. So I'm gonna copy Laura's answer. I'm gonna say one more. That, can I just say that is always a smart decision. DC has <laughs> done it. <laughs> um, you know, Arrogant Bisping much. has done it in the Arrogant past. Arrogant much? Arrogant much? <laughs> Zero. She wins. Put her in a bantamweight title fight right now. Right now. All right. There you have it. Um, we're gonna play rent free. I know the producers told you about this a little bit. This is a, a moment from a fighter on this card that has been living rent-free in your head since the time that you first saw it. I am going to start with The Sugar Show, making his debut in season one of the Contender Series. Take a listen. Hands down to his side. This oh, Molly! Combination! Three-piece dinner with biscuits. Oh, oh Molly! Oh, 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 Molly! If there's one guy on this show that resembles the same, the, UFC O'Malley. the same body style to the UFC O'Malley. as my boy Snoop, it's Afro O'Malley. I told you Afro was going to get it. Oh, I'm going to tell you. Eight Welcome now. to the UFC O'Malley. I got to meet that kid, man. That's 20. I got to meet that kid. Old, oh, those that are was, the glory days. That was season one those of Dana White's Contender days. Series pre-Apex. So good. You could toggle back and forth 
um, on Fight Pass between the Snoop cast and we called it the straight cast, right? How, Back then, inc how insane is it that it you crazy. and I were co-workers with Snoop Dogg for a year yeah. and came to work and got contact high in well, the Only one of us gym. smoked weed with them. Oh, you didn't? No, I never smoked. Oh, well, you missed out. That was very sad. Not that time, anyway. <laughs> Ellie's like, I smoke fentanyl with him. Oh, stop. Oh, my stop. God. <laughs> What's your rent-free? My rent-free moment. I will never forget when Kevin Holland knocked out Jacare Souza from the bottom. This, this fight was absolutely crazy. He's trying to submit Jacare Souza, jumps guard here, and where do you not want to be? It's on the bottom against Jacare Souza, and then is able to land this right hand from his back. That's that, crazy. It, that defies physics. It shouldn't happen. Yeah, my rent free here is Cheeto hit oh, Frankie. Man. Oh, no. Not only that, but the picture that went viral yes. online of Frankie's face is what went oh. rent free in my head. Yeah, this one. Cheeto was hunting that down for a really long time. Another one broke his nose right away, puts him on the canvas. Good for Cheeto. Here's my rent free. We're in Abu Dhabi. Dustin and Connor, mm. the rematch. Dustin, as the fight went on, you could just see his confidence growing and growing and growing. He battered Connor's legs with calf kicks to the point that McGregor was a stationary target. Dustin landed a nasty overhand left, then put the power to Conor McGregor and finished him in the rematch. Made him a star. How about a knockout so nice? We're gonna go over it twice, oh, Laura. Yes. Kevin Holland, not only he tried to jump guillotine Jacare Souza, stupid, jumps up and punches from his back, never been done before, grabs his head and then starts punching him. That was like three of the most visceral moments, followed by two things you're supposed to never do against Jacare. And he still got the W. You did better than I did. That was great. That was good. I had to make up for it since <laughs> I copied you. Um, we're about three minutes away from Steve-O joining the show. Who knows I'm what's going to happen when Steve-O gets here. Um, but until then, let's talk favorite training stories. I'm sure all of you have uh, so many. DC, we'll start with you on this one. Guys, listen to this. The original AKA, Strip Mall, San Jose, California. I walk in as a wrestler. They tell me I am going to help Cain Velasquez prepare for his championship fight against Brock Lesnar. But they line up five or six of us. We're all standing next to this boxing ring. Cain Velasquez, El Toro is in there looking mean, smoke out of his nose. We are switching every two and a half minutes on Cain to try to get through five rounds. Nobody could even make it two and a half minutes. We were rolling under the bottom rope after Kane was done destroying us for two and a half minutes. It was single-handedly the most impressive thing I've ever seen in my life, and he did it every single Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. By the time it was done, Kane had sparred a ton of rounds, but he had sparred a ton of rounds with five to six guys every single day. It was crazy. That is crazy. Mm. Two and a half minutes. That is crazy. It's all you had to do. You had to survive two and a half minutes because he was trying to kill you. It was like, oh my God, this man's going to kill me. <laughs> my story isn't quite as cool because when I came up, I, you know, I was training in the Midwest and there just were not that many superstars that came through Kansas City. But for a short period of time, I went out to Huntington Beach for about six months and trained at HBUTC. This was like 2009. And Razor Rob McCullough was a teammate of mine for that period of time. And he was the nicest, most helpful guy ever. I walked in that gym and they gave me the weirdest look I've ever seen in my life. I don't think a girl had ever trained there before, but I worked my ass off, gained their respect, and I will never forget every time I would shoot a high crotch from then on. He went over that with me over and over and over again because apparently I was pretty slow learner at that point. Uh, and to this day, like I just, I just, I appreciate the attention that he would give someone who at that point had not even had a couple, I think I had a couple amateur fights. So um, it was cool to be training with a, a WEC champion. Did you look like the girl on the left or the girl on the right? <laughs> I'm just like, I gotta know, right? I gotta know what Razor Rob. I gotta know what Razor Rob. There's a picture. Look, okay, I'm on, okay, I'm on the right. Okay, I'm, uh, okay. I'm just like a transitional phase. Oh, yeah, you were in a bit of a transition. Yeah, yeah. I it's gotta a transitional be sure. Phase. You know, I, you were still I just wanna know. I just wanna yeah. know which one you look like. I was blossoming. Okay, you're you know? blossoming. Yeah, I was blossoming. <laughs> well, let me take you back to the late 2000s when the young RJ Clifford hadn't turned pro yet, still doing, still doing just jujitsu. Wait, you fought? 
Yeah. I'm a, I'm a don't be, dis- don't be just disrespectful. Like you. Yeah, he's I'm an all American wrestler just like you. you. Made all We're the same, you and me. <laughs> exactly the same credential, wrestling wise. Kazushi Sakuraba versus Hoist Gracie 3 at uh, K1 Dynamite in uh, the LA Coliseum. That's when Sakuraba was training at Shootbox. My gym was a Shootbox affiliate. So Kazushi Sakuraba, oh my the God. legend, comes strolling into my jujitsu gym out of nowhere. Yeah. <gasps> what did you do? I shit my pants. <laughs> like, we cleaned it up. We all, like the whole jujitsu gym, just went to the side, and him and his training partner just trained. And so we're pretending to like roll. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. like drill an armbar when Kazushi Sakuraba is right there, <laughs> training. And he does this sweet like from the back like side choke on his partner. Mm. And so I see it, and I, I start like kind of you know, like practicing on my, on my guy. And I hear this. <laughs> Sakuraba sees me no, doing he it. Calls and he's like. Over. Oh, oh you so must cool. have been so He's like, dude, do it later. I was like, Sakuraba's showing me a move. <laughs> Sakuraba's showing me a move. Sakuraba. <laughs> Kazushi Sakuraba taught me a move. That's crazy. That's awesome. awesome. Hey, that's, that's a good one. Hey. Yeah, you don't usually have cool things to say, but that was cool. <laughs> I just need Sakuraba in all my stories. We'll be fine. Yeah. All right, my favorite one. So imagine I'm 18 years old, and I start training at Grudge Training Center for a little bit, okay? And this is Trevor Whitman's gym a really long time ago. Really good guys. Dwayne Ludwig. Shane Carwin, Brendan Schaub, a lot of guys like that coming out of that gym. I go in there at 18 years old, and the sparring that we used to do was hard. And the light guys used to go first, and then the heavier guys would go after. So I finish up sparring, 18 years old, first kind of experience in a gym like that. I look over, and Donald Donald Cerrone is sparring someone, and he knocks the guy out, and without a pause, someone goes into the cage, drags the guy out of the cage oh my God. and someone else goes into the cage. And in my head, I was like, I can never let these people hit me again. Oh and God. I think that that's maybe why I don't get hit that much. <laughs> of the fear of the, oh yeah, oh yeah. I was like, that's how I'm gonna be treated if I get wow. knocked out here. So, dead cold body yeah. out of the ring. So I developed yes. a style around not having that happen to me. I imagine there's like a wheelbarrow outside the cage and yeah. just throw the bodies on it and like, bring out your dead. <laughs> bring oh my God. Your dead. <laughs> Wow, that's an, Monty fight. Haley. that's an amazing story. There's a reason I never fought DC. Uh, okay, you don't want to hurt anybody. We're, yeah. we're waiting. Yeah, what's your tra- your training story? You want to hear about it? Oh man, one time <laughs> I ran on the chair. All right, keep waiting. We're gonna go to uh, take a look at who's weighed in so far. Uh, everybody making weight on the card except CJ Vergara. He missed by a pound. He was given time to try to weigh in again. He did. Uh, he was unable to make weight. We'll keep you posted on the status of that fight with uh, CJ Vergara and his opponent Asu Almabaev. Uh, But everybody else is good to go. These are the prelims uh, and the early prelims. And we took a look, take a look now at the main card. This is such an unbelievably stacked card. 16 ranked fighters. Everybody on the main card is ranked. Piotr Jan and Song Yidong kicking things off. And then it's Gilbert Burns and Jack Della Maddalena, MVP making his UFC debut against Kevin Holland, the Diamond Dustin Poirier, and Benoit Saint Denis. And then it is Marlon Chito Vera and Sean O'Malley for the title. This is going to be so much fun. Chito Vera getting his uh, second crack at Sean O'Malley and looking for his second win. Uh, By the way, you know that Miami is known for its Latin dishes. So much great Latin food down here. We decided to find out what some of the uh, favorite Latin dishes in Miami are. My favorite Latin American food. My favorite Latin American food. Big steak. Oh man, I love uh, a good fish uh, with, uh, with some tomatoes, Mediterranean style. About to ask what Latin American food is. My favorite Latin American food is tacos. Tacos? Gotta be tacos. Tacos. Latin food. Ah, Latin food, okay. Yeah, feijoada. Pupusas, 100%. Pollo tropical. Ceviche, papa la guancaina. My favorite Latin food is steak tacos. Taco de carne asada. Tacos. Very simple, tacos. They're quick, they're easy, and they can be a lot of fun. No one can resist a good taco. My favorite Latin American food is mole because of its sweet and spicy flavor. My favorite Latin food is probably mole. Chips and salsa. La mejor creación que ha habido en el mundo. It's 
steak with chimichurri, some good salt. Can't beat it. That was in Madison Square Gardens? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that was We're, MSG, yeah. I, I, that was fun. Yeah. Look, look at this guy. He needs no introduction. He's making himself <laughs> right at home. We don't bring a fifth chair in for too many guys. But when Steve-O's here with his dog, Wendy, from Peru, we have to make room. Welcome to the show, brother. <laughs> hey, thanks for having me, guys. L let me hear a little bit about, about this Wendy from Peru story. Uh, I was down in Peru with Chuck Liddell. <laughs> We were uh, filming. All stories that start with, I was with Chuck <laughs> Liddell. Those are good stories. Those are, Chuck Liddell, those are good stories. Yeah, we were filming a, like a reality show um, about mountain climbing. And I knew we were going to be at the base camp in the mountains in the Andes for three weeks. And I thought, oh, let's bring a street dog. And I found Wendy here. And by the time that uh, three weeks was up, there was zero question that she was coming home Aww. with me. And uh, she goes everywhere I go. It's awesome. I love yeah. it. I love it. Yeah, you have it's been sweet. to so many UFC fights. You're a massive fan. As a matter of fact, the uh, the leash. Can you can you hold yeah. up the leash? Her Wendy's leash is a is a UFC. She's leash. decked out. And this yeah. is this is how big of a UFC fan Steve-O is. There normally the stadium starts filling up. You know, kind of middle of the prelims, towards the end of the prelims when the main card. Steve-O is at fights for the early prelims sitting yeah. in the VIP section right there behind Dana. I mean, you're, you're, you're massive. How did you get into it, and what is it that draws you to the sport so much? Um, you know, I, I, I wish I could say that, that I've been a diehard fan forever, but um, the reality is I came in on the Ronda Rousey hype train. I was just too interested in what was going to happen with her fights, and uh, then th that's just what got, got me in. And since then, I've, I've been a psycho. I, I have my fiance Lux over there. She's every bit the rabid fight fan that I am. And uh, I'll never forget when uh, Darren Till fought um, Tyron Woodley in Dallas. We uh, showed up for the very first uh, fight past prelim. I think Irene Aldana was the first fight. And um, walked into the arena and the lead singer of the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Anthony Kiedis, was sure. already yes. in his seat. Already in his seat. And, and, and we're like, this, our seats are marked immediately next to him. And I'm thinking to myself, like, don't be a kook, Steve. Don't, 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 <laughs> don't, don't, just shut up, be cool, play it cool. And uh, sat down there, and we watched fights with Anthony Kiedis for six straight hours, and we were just talking about fighting the whole time. Had the greatest time. And more recently, I was sitting next to Corey here in uh, Madison Square Gardens, and I told him that I was present at his fight against Rob Font mm -hmm. in Tennessee. Corey says, "Sorry about that one." Man. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I said, "I said, Corey, what other sport is there where you can be criticized, hated on?" Because, oh man, that dude was just trying to win. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? exactly. It's like only fighting where you have to entertain the audience and win. And uh, I mean, what was your injury during that fight? Uh, I tore my tricep in that one, yeah. So it kind of left it completely out of commission. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, fighting with, with injuries, it's crazy, man. I'm just a huge fan. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Yeah, thanks. Man. And uh, yeah, I say this to all fighters that um, the. <laughs> A career in fighting is tenuous at best. It's, it can turn on you so fast. Steve, I had a question for you. Yeah. Man, you spend a lot of time in fights, UFC. You watch, You obviously you see us sitting next to the octagon enjoying our job. Laura Sanko, pretty sure you know who she is. Yeah. Corey, are you a fan of Dan Hill? You know, I mean, I'm just saying, I'm just asking. Just, Steve, I'm just there saying, was a tweet. It's, it's okay. It's there okay. was a tweet that said, Dan Helly, who the fuck is that guy? Because we did <laughs> meet tweets. So I'm just trying to find out, Steve, like. It's fair. It's fine. I mean. It's fine. You, you don't have cauliflower ear. I don't. I don't. I tried to get it. I tried so hard. Oh, I watched that video. That was uh, awful. Uh, you yeah. tried the hardest anyone's ever tried yeah. to get cauliflower ear. I was on tour in Australia, and um, uh, Alexander Volkanovsky yeah. was uh, offered his services to try to help me get cauliflower <laughs> ear. And, and then he saw my show with, uh, with everything I'd done. He said, I, I got nothing after that. <laughs> <laughs> well, your ears still, it still look great. Yeah, it still um, great. It, it, my ears went through hell yeah. in my efforts. But, um, 
Okay. Wait, 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 so, so, what is your story? <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. Fair enough. No idea who I am. That's just fine. I, Steve, I think you're a reasonably attractive guy. That's why. I think he's, uh, a, he's a good-looking white dude. He's a good, decent enough looking, like 60, 60 year old white guy. 60? I, I think uh, you look like a, a healthy guy, uh, a aging well. Thanks, Steve. Holding it yeah. together. How old yeah. are you? Yeah, 48. Oh, 48. I thought you were that young? DC. You're such a dick. <laughs> uh, Man, this is I'm Steve uh, show. I, I'm older than him. <laughs> I know, still looking good, though, brother. Let me, let me ask you this since we're here on a UFC weigh in show. I'm going to bring it back to the UFC, and we're talking dominant champions, right? Sean yeah. O'Malley defending his title for the first time. Volk loss. We have not had I've, all these dominant champions are gone, right? DC's retired. So that a lot of these y young guys haven't held the belt for very long. Sean O'Malley is a guy who we could see hold on to the belt for, for a little while. Is there another guy that you think could have a long championship run here who, who maybe is uh, holding a belt right um, now? I I think Ilya Tuporia looks like he's in a pretty good position to be champion for a while. That's good. Yeah, that's, I love a, that. that's a very strong pick. I, for me, I look at the the strawweight division. Zhang Wei Li. Yeah. Who? 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 Especially now that she has put together the wrestling, that last performance. I mean, I look at that her style now, and it's like, who? Who's going to take that belt from her? So for me, it's Zhang Wei Li. I have Ilya. I think. Uh, I think when it comes to fighting, position and space are some of the most important things. And I think that that type of build with that type of athletic attributes, I think he stays in position all the time. He's a really a master at space. And yeah, I think Ilya is going to reign for a champ for a, t for a time. Yeah. How about Islam? I mean, is, yeah. I mean, he's pound for pound number one in the world. He hasn't lost in like seven years, uh, nine years actually. And he's only 32 years old. So there's there's a lot of runway left. I agree with you, Hell. Oh, there we yeah. go, baby. Yes. We're back on track. That's my point right there. We're back, Hellcat. Yo, what is going on? It's almost like sometimes you have someone that is as dominant as Makachev is, and you almost forget, like, wait, this new guy's fun. This new guy's exciting. What about the guy that beat Charles Oliveira in a round and a half? Like, what about the guy that beat Volk twice, that started Volk in the situation that he's in right now as Ilya Taporia knocked him out? And then when you look at the top of the division, who do you see matching up well against Islam Mahachev? So I do believe that 8, 9, 10, 11 defenses, that's over. I don't believe we'll see people doing that. But if there's a guy or gal, Zhang Wei Li's a great one too, that has the opportunity, I think it's Islam Mahachev. All right, DC, you got to take off. You're leaving us for first oh, take. You got to go talk to Stephen A and the guys. Oh, look how. He's really, big really, we're just trying to fill this chair with the, this is the, the smart biggest mind. big time I've ever seen my life. Hey guys, here. now it's a mental meeting. Watch these guys finish the weigh-in show, then come catch your boy on first oh. day. <laughs> <laughs> in ten minutes, I'm on first day. Right, yeah, he has I a lot. Love you, Steve, oh, you the man, wow. baby. Hey, this Steve, is the warmest seat I've ever sat. Yeah, in. he's been farting <laughs> in that for hours. What I was gonna say is that the, the, the fighting careers, like ten years, they can turn on you so fast, and, and to see fighters in this capacity, uh, you know, as, as media personalities, like setting themselves up with other things to do. It, it's so important. And, yeah. and congrats on uh, being in that chair, being on the mic. And cool. uh, yeah, I he love has, it, man. He has a new YouTube channel that he started not long ago, too, I Steve love that, too. Yeah. It'd be That's crazy not to at this point. Yeah, thanks, Steve. -O. Yeah, thank you for sure, um, man. Can we talk, since it is a Bantamweight championship fight that we have coming up at UFC 299 on Saturday night, can we talk five greatest Bantamweights of all time? We you can. guys down with that? Just one from you. You don't have to give us five, but when we get to you, Steve-O, <laughs> uh, uh, I, 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 I want your, your greatest of all time. Corey, we'll start with you since this is your weight class. Yeah, all right. I'm glad that DC left, actually, before I read my list. <laughs> um, but obviously you got Cruz, right? You got Dillashaw with an asterisk next to it because of, right. you know, the stuff and uh i mean you have sterling and then i think outside of that what 135 champs do you have that were reigning for a really long time yeah not too many because you know i think that four and five are to be decided mm -hmm. and uh hopefully i'll make that list you're not putting yourself on that list no, right I now haven't, i haven't earned that yeah i haven't earned that yeah yeah all right I like that. um laura 
Okay, so for me, um, I have Dominic Cruz at number one, 13 wins in a row. I mean, what he did in the WEC was incredible. Aljamain Sterling, of course, longest reigning champ. That just tells you how often this belt turns over, how difficult it is to keep a hold of it. TJ Dillashaw, as you say, slight asterisks there, but you can't you can't keep the man off the list, in my opinion. Hennan Barrow. Hennan Barrow, his record was 31 and 1 when he fought Faber. 8 0 in the UFC WEC. I am mixing in some WEC stuff here, of course. And then number five, Shalom Ali. That is only to say that you are so <laughs> close. These are only guys that have already won the belt, already have done it. So disrespectful. The man's it's sitting not, right no. here. He's sitting <laughs> right <laughs> freaking here. I would look like I was just com a completely. No, he respects the list. No, I respect it. Right. Yeah. I respect it. F fair enough. Uh, Steve, what about your number one? All right. Now I'm going to preface my pick by pointing to um, some work I've done for Cage Warriors. I've been, uh, I've called fights for Cage Warriors and I've, I've always done it with Angela Hill. Okay. And Angela Hill has accused me of objectifying fighters. So with that said, I think Cody Garbrandt is just absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, he's, I a think man. He's, he's a very, very attractive man. And, uh, you know, he, like, he was the champion in an explosively entertaining fight against Dominic Cruz. That's I good. like Cody Garbrandt. Good pick. Yeah. I like it. I like it. Uh, do you guys want to make fun of Daniel Cormier's list while he's not here? Yes. Oh, let's I do got it. it right here. Yes. Uh, his number one, Dominic Cruz, two, TJ Dillashaw, three, Aljamain Sterling. I think we're all, you know, pretty close there. He yeah. went Piotr Jan number four. Interesting. Henry Cejudo, number five. What? And then you're not supposed to do your number seven team. You put Corey Sanhagen, number 17. <laughs> down there. You see that? Is that? What a dick. I'm just, I'm just kidding. He put, yeah. interesting. Yeah, Jan at four. I mean, you know why he put Henry. Yeah, right. Well, because he loves wrestling. Because he loves wrestling. They were teammates, right? He was the team captain of that, okay. that, that, yeah. that uh, Olympic team. Has Henry won at 135 I was just going to say, before? I don't think he's... He won, he won, he won, one, won one, one, two fights. Two fights. Marais and Cruz, that's two the, fights. That, that's the but that's dumbest what DC does. I've like, ever he just, heard. He just makes his own. Yeah. What about your list, RJ? Uh, about one, two, and three. I don't, I don't asterisk stuff because I feel like it's just such a gray area. Like, it's not gray with TJ Dillashaw. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty black and white. <laughs> with TJ. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Touche. Two asterisks. With TJ. Yeah. Or three. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, Giannis Cejudo doesn't make, yeah, I, I think people forget Hennon Burrell. Yeah, all right. they do. Because the, the fall was so brutal. But you know who didn't? Why, do, why do we think that we haven't had these, these, these dominant champions for a, a, a minute? Why are so many of them going away right now? Izzy's gone, Volk's gone. Those guys held the belt seemingly forever. You know, Kamaru uh, no Valentina. longer holding a belt. It's Valentina. You know, Amanda's gone. Wow. Yeah, I don't know. I think uh, a piece of it has to do with what you can only fight two times a year is what most champs are doing. And, I mean, if you look at that, that's only in your prime until uh, by the time you get there, you're probably 32, 33, and then you got, what, one or two more years before your chin and, you know, your reactions go a little bit. So you only get, like, three, four, five chances at really winning all of those championship fights. And then it just goes to the next guy. Age. Yeah. Age. age. Like when, when age. Jose Aldo came in as champion in his 20s, John Jones came champion in his 20s, George St. Pierre got a title fight in his like fourth UFC fight in his 20s. You got, I got Kamara Usman, who was his like early 30s when he got his title fight. These guys are just, this is taking longer and longer to How about, get to a title because fight. Because the game is more sophisticated. It's harder to get into the UFC. It's to get it takes UFC. more time to develop. Yeah. The divisions are deeper. Tony Ferguson had a 12-fight win streak, and obviously there's other circumstances, but didn't get a real title fight. Yeah. It's incredible. It's impossible. I it's mean, Bilal's possible. the only guy who hasn't had a title fight that's even close, right, to that many wins in a row. And he's 35. And, and how about Leon and Islam are our longest reigning champions. They've both that's had crazy. two title defenses. That's and Islam has yet to defend against a lightweight. Yeah. He's fought both twice. And he, has he really not defended his belt in the lightweight division? It's in the lightweight division, but it was against the 45er Volkanovski twice. Oh, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. good point. Yeah, good no, point. it's yeah, such yeah. a deep division. Yeah. You know what this makes me yeah. appreciate? How long this guy's been on top of the world. Right? Since the original <laughs> podcast days. <laughs> Steve-O. And he's not going anywhere yet. We're going to play a little beach volleyball. While we set up for that, let's take a look at uh, the reason that we are here for UFC 299. And you don't want to go anywhere because you know if it's an athletic endeavor, one of us is going to struggle.
<laughs> I think I just won one. While circumstances surrounding the first contest between Marlon Chido Vera and Sugar Sean O'Malley. Something's wrong with O'Malley's leg. May have put the result into question. Chido and another one! That is it! Marlon Chito Vera! Their rematch on March 9th presents the opportunity to remove all doubt. Four second inhale, four second hold, four second exhale. An opportunity at the champion isn't taking lightly. To drown yourself with the breath, drown yourself in the body. Stay with that pace. Cheeto's very good. He's beat some really, really good guys. Not taking anything away from him. I just believe I'm better in every aspect. Footwork, baby, footwork. Keep those feet moving. Boom, right there. Good. Break it down. Nice. Not a boy. Yep. But it's a 25 minute fight. I can't come out there in the first round trying to put him out, and then there he is, second, third, fourth, fifth round, just still on me, and I'm gassed out. Nice and smooth. Let's just control it. Let's get warm. All day, big dog. Let's go. Perfect. I know how I need to show up for this fight and where I need to be at mentally. Does he? We'll see. At UFC 299 in Miami, Florida, rivals meet once again. He has been sensational. He is a sniper with legit knockout power. This kid has it. The most decorated finisher in UFC Bantamweight history, Marlon Chido Vera. Only this time, the victor will leave Bantamweight champion of the world. Chido comes to hurt you. I'm gonna break Sean. Chido Vera is an animal. I'm gonna kick his ass. Oh! The power of Chito Barrett. And it won't be the first time you're gonna be taken on this stretcher. Oh my god. The Sugar Show on top of the world! March 9th, putting this dude's lights out on to the next. Let me fire one up. All right, we are in the Sunshine State. That means beach volleyball is prevalent. Not the beach volleyball capital of the world because that's Southern California, specifically Manhattan Beach, Huntington Beach, Hermosa Beach. But, you know, we're here. So we're going to play a little beach volleyball. It's me and Steve-O on one team. On the other team, Corey Sanhagen, Laura Sanko. It's a very low net. It's a kid's net. So, so, so Sanko has a chance in this game, are all right? You, you see the lines here? We can't cross the lines here. We are going to serve traditional volleyball rules. Can't touch the net. We're playing to 11. Steve-O, get us going. We won. No, no, no. We serve. No, no, no. We serve. We serve. Corey serves. Here we go. Let's start. Where, where, what did you no. win? Here you go, Steve-O. We serve. It is International right, Women's fine. Day. Don't make me make fine. it. <laughs> all right, here we go. All right. All right. <laughs> Oh, shoot. Oh, wow. That's hold on, hold on, hold on. It slipped. Okay. Two serves. Two That's serves. my bad arm. That one's a little hurt I'm still. I'm going to underhand it. Two serves? <laughs> Since what? Oh. oh, shoot. All right. All right. God damn it. All right, zero, zero. Here we go. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, where'd it go? You All right, we need a ball. We need a ball. It's like lacrosse. You got ball standing by. All right, Steve, let's go. I feel like we're in that scene from Top Gun right now. <laughs> Playing with the ball. Oh, yeah. The ball. Oh boy. Don't right, turn for it. One, one nothing. Here we go. Steve O right. serving. Trying to make it two nothing. Oh, oh, darn it. All right, out of bounds. One more shot. One more oh, they're gonna one get, more we're getting, we're, getting, we're gonna do it like tennis. You get a, sec right. you get a second serve. Do you do wow. Yeah. Second, second serve. Okay. Oh, sorry. Nice. What a team. What a team. Oh, out of bounds. Out of bounds. All right, switch server. Sank goes up. I'm just gonna do underhand. Ah, Ooh, good serve. Oh! Yes. Oh! Whoa! Yes. Ah, that's a point. Yes. Do we? Uh, Two, one. Can we get a replay? That thing yep. stepped into the out of bounds. Oh, I think he stepped into the line. Any kind of. He was after. <laughs> He's after. Ah, oh, oh. dang it! One more, one more serve. Do I get one more, more serve. Yep. The only first time. No. Oh. Oh, you right. second game. Okay, here we go. So Next what's the score? 1-1. 1-1, huh? All right, here we go. Ooh. All right. Wow. 
That was bad. I get a second serve. It makes sense because he's a fighter. He's I was trying to go hard. Couldn't get there. Couldn't get there, Steve-O. Sorry, dude. No point. Nice Switch effort. Sides. Switch sides. Can I start calling you Rooster? <laughs> Why? <laughs> you didn't see Maverick? Oh, no. Playing with the balls. <laughs> He's training. The balls. <laughs> no, that's a boy. Can we, can we get a replay on that? Two what Dan one. just did? And you call me on this. a shitty athlete? You just went like this. He, look at this. Look at that rocket. <laughs> oh, ooh, three one. Oh, Steve, All I'm right. killing this. Let's go. Yeah, you, you're, you're really, really blowing it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Let it go. Uh, out of bounds, 4-1. Corey with this, the heater of a serve. Helling up, representing Manhattan Beach very well. Oh, shit. Oh, that's a set of That's a hard serve. 5-1. Don't you live in Manhattan Beach? I mean, this serves better than his Rob Fott fight. This is unbelievable. <laughs> What's going on? Wow. <laughs> wow, that is some real shit talk. Uh, out of bounds. Get out. Two it's our Two out of bounds. It's all right. Yes. It's all right. Steve Over up. the line. Your serve, bro. All right. Let's run it up on him. What are we playing to? Ooh. Ow. Get it, get it, get it. Uh, ah. Yeah, get in. Ah. Yes. Yes. That's the end yes. Good point. Yes. Good point. Good point. Good point. Right. Good point. Can't lay out on the cement. I Four know. two. I'm trying to yeah, hit it. Yeah, if you don't want it bad enough. Great. You're doing great. I'm trying to I'm hit Dan in the face with the ball. <laughs> Oh, wow. no shot. No shot. Need a ball. Need a ball. Need a ball. Darn it. Sanko, serve. Just try and get it over, Sanko. Did, did you see how you hit that ball earlier? This is not real <laughs> you volleyball. Went like this. Oh, oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Okay, here we go. I'm not messing around anymore. Damn nice, it. nice serve. One more no, time. No, no, no. She already had a first serve. She didn't get a. Yeah, no, she didn't. Why? No, I didn't. He's lying to you. Yeah, this I just is. Did. No, uh, I didn't. You haven't served yet this entire game? No, no, no. It's each round. Oh, why are we doing that? No, no. It's International Women's Day. We're making it easier. Oh, my God. Out of bounds. That's a point. Good hustle, Steve. -O. All right. All the. Getting some heavy breathing on this side of the court. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, damn right, it. Nice serve. Okay, Sorry. what's the score? I suck. Two six. No, no. Two six. Oh, All right, All right. All right. six three. Oh, shit. Six oh, four. Oh, wow. It's four and six. We got this. We All got this. We got this. Oh, illegal, illegal kick. He was all up in. Way across the line. Yeah, what? No point. Six Point five. over here. Six five. Six five. Is that? That's clean. That's clean. That's clean. He, he did not. Queen he did not cross. We got no cross. Queen is a whistle. Right. That's bullcrap. Back over. Bring right. us home, six, Corey. Five. Bring us right, six, five, five serving six. Six serving five. Right at Steve-O's nuts. <laughs> yeah. One more serve. Right. One more serve. That's right. That's right. That's right. Out of What's the score? Come back. Six, six five. five serving six. Inbounds. Oh, in Tied up. Sorry. Oh, no. What a comeback. Down 6 1. For the lead. Out of bounds. Good eye. Good eye. All right, let's. Are we up one or tied? 6 6. Okay. Playing to 11. What a return. All right, here we go. Tied up. 6 6. We're gonna go on a little run here. Wow. Yeah. Seven six. Seven six, here we go. Okay, found his stroke. All right, Todd. Let's go, Todd. Out of bounds. Fudge. How's that possible? Todd Grisham would have smashed that serve. <laughs> oh, is that right? Yeah. Really. Uh, this side. <laughs> does course, does this air tomorrow? This, this is there live, live right on YouTube now. right it's now, Steve. Right. Right. You, you are cuss. live television. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I got it. Ah. Sevens. Seven serving seven. All right, dude. Seven I'm seven. Serious. Let's go, go, bro. Serious go. mode. Sport <laughs> mode. Out. Out of bounds. Okay. It's, it's hard to hit that thing. Seven seven. Yeah. Steve, you're sure, bro. Well, and the, it's such a small area that you can't. 
Oh, oh wow! There was some, in, right some impediment the there. Caught you in the Sanka. Ball to the face. Ah. Oh, oh it's in. in. His foot's over. No, it was in. No, it's he's in good. Right there. He's literally on the line, Helly. That's me, Jude. Yeah, he's, he's, he's literally, he's literally. He's oh. good. Clean, go. clean. God bless. Referees are here for a reason. All right. You ready, Todd? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Out of bounds. Out of bounds. All right, here we go. Now we get another one. I dude. get another chance. What's the score? I get another chance. Okay, well, now it's 9 7. Sorry, Megan. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Hey, hey, silly. That's a compliment. It's our surf. We just scored that no, point. No, that is. I missed, so I get another chance. It's you International Women's Day. You've got to give them some extra ones. Out of bounds. Switch it over. What's the term when it goes yeah, to the end? Ball. I don't know. <laughs> Good job. Uh -oh. Oh. Oh. Out. Damn. Way out of bounds. My bad. Oh, you are carrying our Way team. Way to keep it alive. I appreciate it. It is my turn. What's the score? Maybe next time, Mike Goldberg. Uh, you're down 8-7. <laughs> Seven serving eight. Rooster! Uh, no, I had no, no, no. What are you doing about, about that? That's my bad. Suck it, Dominic Cruz Light. Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> They're the same week. All right, here we go. <laughs> oh. Sorry, Laura. I didn't that mean was, to serve it hey, so that hard. That was a good serve. That was a good serve. Ten seven. I can't dive on game the point. Cement. Oh, shoot. Wow, it's the game. That's not game point. Oh, ten, oh, oh. ten seven? Ten oh, seven. Ten seven. Now Excuse ten me. Seven. One more. Point uh, serving here we seven. Go. For the win. Yeah. For it all. Steve-O and Hell. Are you trying to cover for Laura? You don't think she can handle it? Oh, oh, oh. oh it stays alive. What is it? <laughs> it's looking at the eyeball. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> All right. Is it you, Laura? Darn, Steve, you almost killed him. Seven, seven, ten. Oh, okay. All right, here we go. What is it? Ten, seven? Yeah, seven, seven, ten. ten. Ugh. What a rocket. I, I got it. Oh, sorry, oh, you sorry, it. sorry. You got, sorry. It. You, got it. you got it. I got it. Oh, shit. All right. Adam Adams! Oh, ten, eight. That was All the right, best rally of the game. So far. That was good. We got to come out and win the end of this one. Nice. I got it. What happened here? Oh, oh no. here you Sorry. Uh, hit his hand. Hit his hand. It hit his uh, hand. I did not see a hit. I did not 10, see a touch. Well, replay it. It hit his hand and went out of bounds. 10-9. I didn't see, I didn't see Are a touch. Are you going to let Steve-O play over, by the way? Corey. <laughs> I didn't hit it. Liar. Oh, no way. <laughs> Was it 10-9? I want to hit it at you really Dad, Are you going to let Steve-O get the ball at some point? I'm going to fight it. <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that 10s? 10s. <sighs> is that 10-10? 10-10. Right. Ten, ten. <sighs> ten, ten. Get win by two. Cannot let them win. No? No win by two for the game! Oh! No win by Let's two. Let's go! That's, volleyball's I always win by, by two. two. You gotta win Take by two. Take it up with yes. Dan, producer Zach. <laughs> gotta win by oh, two. two. All right, never mind, never mind. Gotta win by two. Never mind. Preemptive. Gotta win by two. Yes! Oh. What a get! Wow. What a get, Steve-O! I just... What is it? Still 10. 10-11 10, on. 10-11. Right. It's 10 serving 11. All right, 10-11. I just gave myself the worst turf toe. Oh. Cement toe. Yes. Oh, shit. All right, got him one by two. Here we go. Okay, it's 11-all. Oh. That's in. I can't... It's 11. 11-all. Uh. Not, not passing. My toe doesn't work. He was in the line. He's good. He's good. He's in the line. Got a rule. The line judge says he's good. good. Since when are you guys in the tank for Corey? Here you go, Lord. Listen, if All Cedric right. Doombay can give up. Sanko serving. We're fine, <laughs> Steve. <laughs> we're fine. I have neither glass nor a splinter. I literally rolled my toe hey, so hard. We're not calling the fight just because you have a splinter in here. All right, we've already seen that happen. It's not happening again. Mark Goddard's <laughs> not here to bail you out. <laughs> Twelve eleven. I got to call that off. Eleven. Here we go. All right, get him, Laura. 
Just spike it right back over. The win! <laughs> oh. Annabelle! Oh, right. Love it all? Is it still love it no, all? No. In what? Love all right, 11, 11, 12, 11 serving 12. Sorry. Oh! oh. He touched it! Point here! Had, had to try, it was gonna go in. All right, their chance to win it right here, all game right. point. I have literally dislocated my toe. <laughs> I'm not joking. All right, here yeah, we go. It looks a little. I know. Looks a little funky. I actually think I dislocated my toe. <laughs> yeah. Well, beach volleyball not meant for concrete. Yep. Oh no 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 no. That that wouldn't have gone over. That wouldn't have gone over. Do over. Okay. Got to go over that. He's I a true actually... sportsman. <laughs> oh. That's the game. All right. Good game. Are you uh, yeah. toe okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you mean to call no. a doctor? Ooh, look at the toe. All... They're a little hairy. There's so many... They're a little hairy. <laughs> you thought hairy? about it. Good game. Yeah. Good game. Good game. Good game. Good game. Good game. Yeah. Good game. Here you go, Laura. I just don't want the foot people after me, but I really just want to. Thanks for joining us, Rob. Yeah, that game. was fun. Yeah, my pleasure. UFC 299. The show gets better when DC leaves. Have you noticed that? And by the way, what an athlete. <laughs> Corey just carrying this squad. Sanko breaks her toe because we're playing beach volleyball concrete. Congratulations. Thank you. You're welcome. To our champions. DC's uh, probably done with this hit. It's a view they're used to looking at, Corey, but thank you. Thank you. How I mean, you carried the team, if I'm being honest. We won. Who we cares? Got it. We, we won. Got it. I had a few moments. How many times do you think I can bounce the ball in my head? Ooh. Let's get guys. I'll go. Four. I'll go. As we go out, Steve-O, I'll go less than 12. Okay. Here we go. Bouncing the ball on his head. One, two, three. Three. Oh. three. <laughs> two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> Steve-O, before we leave, prediction yeah. on the main event. Uh, I, I got him, Allie. You got O'Malley. How's it? Is he gonna finish him? Or is he gonna go the distance? Never been finished. Never been dropped. Right. right. Never been subbed. Yeah. So, never even been dropped. Isn't that crazy? So yeah, Cheeto was uh, the Cheeto Steely in there. So you think it'll go the distance? I mean, if anybody's gonna drop him, it could or, be the Sugar Show. I think it'd be Sugar Sean. You got to give him a lot of credit if he finishes Cheeto. Agree. If he yeah. finishes Cheeto, he gets a lot of credit. Agreed. Yeah. Thank you to Steve-O. Thank you to Corey. Thank you to Seiko being the champion once again on this show. I know it's my number. She wins all the time. Thanks for watching, everybody. It has been uh, a pleasure as always. Wendy from Peru, Steve-O's dog with the UFC leash. DC just messing with Miles. We have a good time. Oh, wow. That's how she's. That's how we're going to end it. Our new Bud Light sponsor, Joe Stone Crab, Key Lime Pie. DC ate all three of those pieces by himself, by the way. But well, one piece to Senko. One piece. <laughs> I want to get that for a meme. Somebody make that for me, will you? There he is, the shark. Sharks and minnows. We, we absolutely destroyed one of them. How did this feel? Not good. No? Not good. Look at Steve-O's teeth. Those things are perfect. They really are. It's unbelievable. That's me imitating Dan, by the way. <laughs> I was just messing around, guys. Right. All right, good work. One of the most stacked cards we've had in what? I mean, I don't know, a it's long insane. time. It's insane. Ceremonial weigh-ins coming up at 5 o'clock Eastern. See you at the fights on Saturday, UFC 299. Thanks for watching the official weigh-in show, everybody. Have a great weekend. You want to touch it?